Today I got time, yes. Today I got time, yes. Today I got time, yes. You lucky on that day I was acting cool, cuz. Nigga, what's up? How gangster are you, cuz? I don't fuck with you, cuz you disrespecting me. I don't fuck with you, cuz you disrespecting me. I go hard, cuz. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are able to hear me. Can y'all see and hear your girl? Let me know. <laughs> I'm waiting for everything to connect here. I hope everybody is doing good. Thank y'all for joining me. My mom just stopped by, so I had to talk to her real quick. She told me to tell y'all hi. You know, she remembers the tea sippers, honey. So I hope y'all are doing good today. It has been a lot. Okay, good. Y'all can see and hear me. That's what's up. Thank y'all for coming through. It has been a lot going on. Oh my gosh, the VMAs were off the chain yesterday. Now let me let me go ahead and say this. We're gonna talk about a lot of stuff. I'm gonna save Dusty Brother Polite till the end. So for y'all who are coming in about Polite, we're not gonna talk about him first because you know that's more of a serious topic, and I don't want them to take down my stream early. So he's gonna be at the end, okay? But we gotta get into this whole VMA situation. We got to get into these looks, the drama. It was so much going on yesterday. So let me go ahead and first let me say this, okay? I have not watched the VMAs in years. I really have stopped watching award shows just because they have been so boring. These are not the award shows of yesteryear. Y'all remember back in like 1999 when Rage Against the Machine ran up that scaffolding, honey, was shaking shit. Y'all remember the drama with, you know, Madonna and Courtney Love, when Courtney Love was throwing makeup compacts at Madonna. Y'all remember Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera kissing, honey. See, back in the day, the VMAs was very, very interesting. So it's not been interesting to me in the last few years. I think the last time I really sat and watched it was Kanye, him being drunk and saying that Beyonce had the best album ever, and then the whole Miley Cyrus debacle. And since then, I kind of just, you know, checked out. So we got word that not only was Nicki Minaj going to be hosting the VMAs, but that Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B were going to be performing bongos. So a lot of people thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be drama, plus Ice Spice is going to be there, and, you know, Demonic Alley Cat Doja is going to be there. So, you know, we were all anticipating a lot of drama, a lot of mess. But honestly, it ended up being a really good show. Like, we watched it together on Telegraph. And I watched it from start to finish, and I really did enjoy it. So let me go ahead and break this down. First and foremost, I I don't really felt like, because people were saying, oh, the show really hit because of Nikki hosting. It did not feel to me that Nikki was hosting. Nikki would come up, she'd do a quick performance, she might say something, and then she just disappeared. It wasn't like back in the day when Chris Rock was hosting. Chris Rock was there the whole time cracking jokes and being interactive. I have forgot that Nikki was the host. They literally went from one performance to another to another. But later on in the night, Nikki did say that MTV was nervous about having her host because they didn't know she could behave herself. Nikki says that she can behave herself, but she doesn't know about Roman. So basically, that little demon Roman that lives inside of her, he's back, okay? And she was even on stage talking about, should I be naughty? Should I be nice? Should I be mean? So I thought it was definitely giving. Now... It was a lot of, you know, crazy fashion looks, and we'll go through the fashion looks in just a moment. Now, let me say this about the performance. I thought Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi, they did really good with the bongos performance. I thought Meg killed it. You know, we all know Meg Thee Stallion has some strong-ass knees, and she put those strong knees to work, okay? She got down low. She was twerking. They both looked really good. It was dope to see Offset super excited and cheering on his wife. So I thought that was cool. But once again, when it came to the little disses, I kind of felt like they kind of rushed past the disses. I didn't really hear the oomph in the disses towards Nikki. But okay, whatever. So then Nikki ends up performing, and she performs um, her latest song, the... One about missing somebody. I don't know the names. Y'all can write the names. I like that song, though. And then she performed a new track. And she was going in. Like, that new track hit hard. You know when Nicki got something to say, she's going to say it. You gonna feel it. You gonna know who she's talking about. She was coming for the new rap girls. Now, what I found very funny 
is that a lot of people were upset at Nicki Minaj's performance. They were saying, okay, last time I saw you, thank y'all, I like that song. They were saying it's not right. Why would she go up there and diss these girls? She's not a teen player. A lot of tattooed tears in, on Twitter, um, which was very interesting to me that people were upset because even near the end, and I was taking bets. Now, I can't play this song. I'm going to share my screen. I can't play the music, but I'm going to share my screen. So this is her performing here. There we go. So she's performing the song. You know, let me let me just give you a little sample. You look up the huh, but really you look up the man. All right, that's all you get. You know the algorithm and you know all that stuff. And she looked good. Nikki looks like she's lost some weight, you know what I'm saying? So she looked good. Um, she looks a lot better here than she did at Essence. I will give her that. She was showing belly, thighs, titties. So a lot of people felt like, you know what, she's always dissing somebody, she's being messy. And I didn't get that. You know, I don't I don't know, like, y'all are weird in this day and age, the sensitivity level. First and foremost, the rap girls back in the day, yeah, a lot of them got along, but a lot of them beefed too. Little Kim, Foxy Brown, everybody threw shots at everybody. But my thing is, bongos had disses in there. Cardi and Megan both had diss tracks in bongos towards Nicki. Remember, my baby daddy's amigo, your baby daddy's a zero, okay? Remember Meg was talking about people with weak knees not being able to twerk and shit and, you know, popping perks? We all know that's Nicki's diss. But see, the problem is this. Unless you're really involved on social media, unless you're part of these fandoms, you know, Barty Gang, the Barbs, the average listener... They're not really going to catch those disses per se and equate them towards Nikki. Because like I said last week when I was reviewing the song Bongos, I felt like those disses did not hit. They didn't land. They were cute, but there was no, the cadence was too flat. It was too sultry for me. When you going in at a chick, you let her know that you talking about her. I didn't get that from them. So I think this is why so many people were upset at Nikki, feeling like, oh, well, you're dissing them because later on that night she came out and she did my song. Now, the Barb's, uh, shout out to Malachi. He told me I've been pronouncing the name of the song wrong. The name of the song is called Red Ruby the Sleeves. Not Ruby Red the, the Sleeves or whatever the hell I was saying, Chad. I knew it was something with Red and Ruby, okay? So he taught me how to say it properly. So I hope you barbs are happy. Later on, now y'all remember I was on Discord. I had posted, you know what I'm saying, because I was recording a video, because we're all in Telegraph talking and stuff. So I was recording video for those who don't have cable, so that way they could watch it. And so I kept saying, I felt she was going to do the Red Ruby song, but folks was like, no, that'd be too messy. Shit, y'all must not know petty-ass Nicki Minaj, Okay. When she came out and that beat hit, y'all heard me on Discord. Oh, I went crazy. I love when that beat hit. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I was here for it. Because if they can go at her on bongos, she has every right to come back and be like, we don't fuck with horses since Christopher Reeves. Okay? She said that with her whole chest and I was here for it. Now, I did notice. I did notice. They made sure not to pan to the audience. We didn't get, I don't know where Cardi B and Megan went after the bongos uh, situation. I, I'm trying to figure out why the camera was constantly focused on Taylor Swift and Ice Spice. It's almost like there were no other celebrities in the house. Every time something happened, the camera right there in Taylor Swift's face. I'm like, they showed Selena Gomez a few times, but it's almost like, but well, where's everybody else? They didn't show anybody else's reactions. I was hoping to see Meg's reaction, but you're not messy, so I don't know. But I, I, I liked it. I was here for it. If they can get up and do bongos and say, you know, they're digs, why can't she perform Red Ruby? What's wrong with that? Why can't she, you know what I'm saying, pop her shit? So I was here for it. I think this VMAs was one of the best in a while. Um, I also love that they did the dedication 50 Years of Hip Hop. I think they did a way better tribute than some of the other, you know what I'm saying, networks. 
I love the fact that they started off with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And let me say, they look good. You know, these, are, these are elder men. Had on skinny jeans and shit. They look very hip. I said, I know that's right. Let them know. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Okay, so I was here for that. You know what I'm saying? People pissing in the stairs because they just don't care. And then, you know, the way they did the transitions was so dope. I was not ready for an additional Nikki performance. So when she came out and she, you know, she did the itty bitty piggy, I was here for that. I was on the plane with the Wayne. You can call me Whitley or go to him, man. Man, I was like, okay, she did not come to play. Then when they transitioned into a milli, a milli, a milli, but um, man, I was rocking out. Y'all heard my videos on Discord. I was rocking out, okay? Carter 3 will always be my album from front to back, okay? I, I, I like Lil Wayne's music, not the new shit, you know, not, not the Lil Wayne with the four dreadlocks, but the old school Wayne, the Carter 3 Wayne. When he came out, I'm a young money millionaire, tougher than Nigerian hair. I was like, damn, yes, bring me back. It was so nostalgic, you know, and that's what I loved about it. When LL Cool J came out there, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to knock you out, huh? Mama said, no. Nah. I was like, what? Okay, okay. Like, I was here for, like, MTV. They, I, I was I was really happy with, the, with everything, you know what I'm saying? It was really, really a nice tribute. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I will say this. It, it was also really cool to see, like, man, Afro beats and K-pop, they're taking over. Before Doja Cat hit number one the other day, there hasn't been a hip-hop record in America to hit number one since Nicki Minaj's, um, what is that song? The, the song, the Rick James song that she remade. That song, that hit number one, but I didn't really like that song like that. Like that song didn't do it for me. Y'all can write in the in the chat. I forgot the name of the song. Super Freaky Girl, thank y'all. Super Freaky Girl. That really didn't do it for me. I liked it Akbar's part, but that song just didn't do it for me. But it did go number one, so the Barb's did their job. But since then, we haven't really had no hip hop songs going number one. Besides Doja Cat, she just went number one with that Demon song or paint no paint the town red. She went number one with that. But I love the fact that Afro beats they're killing shit. Rima Selena Gomez that was cool. I like the fact that he gave homage. You know he paid homage to Fela Kuti. He paid homage to you know just everybody who came before him. So that was really nice. You know they're they're putting in work. They're doing their thing. The K-pop kids, um, I forgot their name. All them little boys, they went up there. They were shocked that they won. Y'all can write their name in the chat. Cute little Asian boys. They went up there. They did their thing. You know, so I like the fact that there was a little bit of everything. Now, I didn't know the Anita girl. I had never heard of her. Stray Kids, that's their name. Thank you, Stray Kids. They did their thing. I didn't know the Anita girl. Somebody told me she's like the ratchet Shakira. I'm here for her. I'm here for her little ratchet song, the little twerking, the little Spanish. Ay, ay, ay. Yes, the Latinos was doing their thing yesterday too, okay? So I was here for it. I like Anita. I said, I'm going to check out some of her music. I didn't know her before this. Um, the Cali girl, I wish she would have got a longer performance. It's like they gave us a kid's cup. I'm like, okay, I want to hear the whole song. They literally let her do like a lyric and then just scooted her off the stage. Don't know what that was about. They spent more time setting up the stage than allowing her to perform. So I didn't like that. They should let her perform. They're going to let her perform. Let the girl perform. Because I like that song. Um, who else? Uh, yeah, I thought it was cute. You know, Taylor Swift, you know, she going to win it all, honey. You know, Taylor never disappoints, you know. Um, Ice Spice, she won Best New Artist. And I think she deserved it. People were saying, no, it should have been Glorilla. And I love Glorilla. I do like Glow. But, you know, I'm the G to the L to the O, big glow. You know, glow in that deep ass voice. I like glow. But let's keep it real. Ice Spice has had a lot of hits. She's went number one. She's, well, not number one, but she's gotten really far up in the bill. I don't think she's hit number one, but she's gotten a lot of hits this year. You know what I'm saying? She's made a lot of smart decisions. She got the, collab the collaboration with Taylor Swift, two signs with Nicki Minaj, Pink Panthers. So, hey. So she's definitely doing her thing. So I can't take that from Ice. I thought she looked cute. She went up there with her little purse. 
You know what I'm saying? She seemed humble. She seemed very, very grateful. So I'm not mad at Ice Spice. Ice Spice, nobody thought she was going to stick, but she's sticking. Okay? Baby girl done came from the Bronx. And you know what I'm saying? She, she's really shaking stuff up. So I'm not mad at her winning. Even though I think Glow is really, really talented as well, I think this was more Ice Spice's year. They've really, really been pushing her. Do I still think she's an industry plant? Absolutely. I'm just saying. I'm here for her song. I'm here for Barbie Girl. I, I love the song. But I do think she's an industry plant. Okay? I, you know, Riot has way too many connections. Riot has really, you know, elevated her. I think her and Riot work really well together. But I'm not mad at her winning. But I do feel like she is an industry plant. But I'm not mad at her. Not mad at her winning at all. Okay? Um, let me see here. What else? I got a few notes. Oh, gosh. We got to talk about Diddy. Now, Diddy won some type of Lifetime Achievement Award. First of all, I think I followed everything Diddy since I was a kid. Like, you know, his start. I've never heard this football story. I don't know if it's just me. Did y'all ever hear that he played so good in college football that he was going to be drafted to the NFL, was going to go play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, then he broke his leg. Put a teacup if you've never heard this damn story a day in your life. I've never heard this story. I said, what the fuck is he talking about? Sir, your introduction to us was you throwing that damn party at Howard University while them damn people got killed. That was my first introduction to him. He was a college student. He knew how to dance and party promote. He threw a big old party. There was a stampede. A bunch of folks at Howard got killed. I ain't never heard this damn football story before. I said, all this man does is lie. Just lie for no reason. Yeah, I was going to get drafted to the, you know, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then I broke my leg. And um, then I just decided to get into music. Sir, shut up. We were all here. I don't remember this ever. I'm behind the music. They've never talked about you playing football, being potentially drafted, just on stage, just lying to the new generation of kids. I can't take this man seriously, okay? I said, get his ass the fuck up off my screen. Now, his performance, okay, it was cute. It gave a bit. I seen the twins, they were back there dancing, so that was cute. He made it a family affair. I'm gonna need him to stop trying to make uh, King Combs, Tristan, happen i'm over his son what does he do besides cosplay diddy i know he's a rapper i know he made the song back in 2022 uh with kodak black it was cute though you know can't stop won't stop he just i need him to find his own personality the dancing like your daddy the diddy bop that was cute for our era. It's cute when Diddy does it. It's not cute when he does it. That's why I couldn't get into the can't stop, won't stop. I liked it, Kodak's verse. You know, King Combs, he tried. They ended up getting up there. I, they went, I think they might have hit number one at some point on the bill, but this was in 2022. So it did go far, but I believe it only went far, one, because Kodak Black was on the track, and the play on nostalgia. But for me, give me crush on you any day. Yeah, I remember I did my little Kim crush on you challenge, okay? Little Kim and little Cease. The way they recreated it in that video, it didn't hit for me. So when I seen that, I said, nope, I checked out. I get tired of him being a clone of his father. Bad boy. Sit down. The only person I want to see do that is Craig Mack. I just need him to get his own personality. Stop cosplaying your daddy. He came out there and did Mace's whole part. Where was Mace? I needed Mace to be there to do the more money, more problems, okay? I don't want Tristan cosplaying Diddy and now cosplaying Mace. I needed him to sit down in the audience and cheer his father on like Chance did. I, I wasn't feeling it, okay? I wasn't feeling it at all. Uh, Keisha Cole star, she came back. And this time, you know, we're going to call it Keisha Cole. You know, usually she's late. She's angry. She's not on point. Keisha Cole slaw has re-elevated herself back to Keisha Cole. Okay? 
Because that versus with Ashanti, she lost all of us. We drug her for weeks behind that damn versus. She redeemed herself. Keisha Cole, you are back being Keisha Cole in my eyes. I will retire the name Keisha Cole Slaw for now until you fuck up again, ma'am. She killed it. She came out there. I was, I, was, I was waiting for Keisha Cole Slaw, but she actually brought Keisha Cole. She came out there like Diddy just got done yelling at her backstage. Oh, she killed that song. Strong vocals. So I know that's right. That was good. I like the fact she came out there. She did her thing. We ain't seen her since the verses. She redeemed herself last night. Okay. Um, Young Miami was not needed. She was not. I don't know what she was singing. I don't know if that was her verse on Act Bad. The crossing of the leg. The flabby, the flabby booty uh, plat that she did before she left, just hit herself in the ass. Girl, just, okay. I, I, I'm the sand man from Apollo. Just, bye. She wasn't needed. She wasn't even there during the bad boy era. Okay? So I just wasn't feeling it. I, didn't, I wasn't feeling his weird speech. Mary J. Blige, we love you. What, who, or what greased your legs, ma'am? Why was half of her legs greased? From the thighs down, they were shining like bacon. From the thighs up, they were ashy. Who stopped? If you're going to grease her up, go all the way up the thigh. Not too close to as a cooch, but you need to go all the way up the thigh. Why were half of her legs greased? I was getting shiny shea butter Crisco vibes till I got to the thighs. It was dry. The stomach, dry. The face greasy, legs greasy. I needed her to have an even shine. That's the queen. Y'all did her wrong. The outfit was not hitting. The, the thighs, no. You can't have ashy hip area, upper thigh area, and then everything else is glistening. I said, who the hell done did this to Mary? Who halfway glistened her legs? You know her legs and her money made when she do that little drunk ass dance. We need her legs to be on point at all times. I was disappointed on whoever greased her legs and left the upper half just dry and ashy. You don't do her like that. Pay me, Mary. I'll, I'll, I'll grease your thighs, ma'am. I know how they should look. But yeah, man, I thought that was, you know, I thought, you know, whatever. It was cool. Cool performance, you know, with some throwback. You know, more money, more problem comes out. I'm going to rap to it. We didn't need Tristan up there cosplaying Mace or Diddy. Um, I thought Chance, the daughter, Chance did a good job. You know, she got up there with Mary J. Blige and, you know, shout out her daddy. I thought that was cute. You know, I like the fact that, you know, all the kids got. I don't know where uh, Justin was. Justin, where were you at? We saw you on the red carpet, but now when it's time to get up there with the family, you know where to be found. Hopefully he was sober. But yeah, Justin wasn't there. Um, who's the other cute one? Quincy. Didn't see Quincy, but the other four were there. So that was cute. That was cute. <laughs> What's his name? Christian. Oh, well, I called him Tristan. Y'all not be, like, child, I be confused all the people's names. Christian. I'm sorry. Christian Combs, child. Yeah, I was looking for Justin. I said, where the hell's Justin. I said, maybe he's sitting down with me, so honey. I didn't see Justin, but he was on the red carpet. You know, they were all on the red carpet, child. Quincy was missing with his cute self. So let me see, what else? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at some outfits here. Yeah, Mary J. Blige's outfit definitely, it, it bothered me a bit. They could have did her better than that. I didn't like it. So we're going to go, we're going to walk over to the shade room and look at some of the pictures from the event together. Cause y'all like when I critique outfits from award shows. Y'all seem to like that. Shout out to all 6,000 people. Go ahead and share my screen here. We're gonna share this tab. All right, here we go. Oh, Let's start with brother love. He's holding his heart. All right, looking like somebody's pastor. Next. Uh, first of all, this whole outfit is bothering me and my homegirls. This is giving me uh, beauty store realness, seven mile bargains realness. It's ill-fitting, the pose. She looked like he, she done stole her stepdaddy's dope money. 
and she's outside posing on the block with it, and then she got to run back in the house and put it back in his stash so she don't get in trouble. I'm going to need Sexy Red to get it together. This, this whole outfit is giving me no. Not at all. You know, the, the little gun pose, like, just stop. It's You know, you got to know when to turn off the ratchet shit and when to just let it hang. And I just felt like this was just a bit much. I wasn't feeling it. It just, the outfit is not cute. The top is very ill-fitting. She has a cute shape, but this dress doesn't do it for me. So, yeah, it's a no for me, sis. Okay, Nikki's pink lingerie outfit. I thought this was cute. I thought it was cute. Um, interesting. You know, it's, it's pink. She's lost weight, so that's a plus. She's lost weight. She looks good. Yeah. I like this. Nikki's always going to give face. I'll give her that. She's always going to give face, no matter what's on her face. I like it. I like it. Okay. It's the G to the L to the O. Big Glow. Now, let me say this about Glorilla. I love the fact that Glorilla is itty bitty. I love all the little itty bitty girls because they remind me of my childhood. You know what I'm saying? I was shaped like Gorilla as a kid when I was way younger. Just, you know, tall and thin. Um, I like the dress, but it's very ill-fitting, okay? Glorilla don't got no boobs, and that's cool. Everybody don't have big tits, right? I think when you're small-chested like that, they should not have pushed it up because it gives her bodybuilder tees. Looks like she's bench pressing. They're trying to push up her itty bitty titties. What they should have did is make this bigger. So that way her boobs fell down and it flattered it. I don't think this flattered her up here at all. It's a cute dress, but it's not flattering. And she's so tiny, they could have tailored this in a bit more. And I don't like this Illuminati eye tattoo, but that's just me, okay? I like the dress, but I don't like it. I just don't think they tailored it to her body. Um, she's thin, and when you're thin like that, your body's like a hanger. You should be able to just put on anything and just, it's going to look good. They failed here. They really could have did something with this because she's so thin. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I saw another picture of her. Ain't that Tanache? I don't like it. I got this same little outfit in my closet. But guess what? I wear it over my swimsuit. I don't wear it with, you know, tape on my tits. Let me see if I can find the other picture of her. Because I sent another picture. I was so shocked at how much she was showing. Let me see if I can find it real quick. The uncensored. Let me show y'all the uncensored. She literally had a strip of tape on her cooch. Pretty girl, but this is not it. You know, there's a difference between classy and trashy. And unfortunately, her outfit gave me trashy. So, just saying. So, let's go back to the shade room. Selena Gomez looked good. I love this dress. It, it fits her well. You know, it fits her boobs well. Yeah, she just, she's giving me classy. She's giving me spicy. She looked really good here. I like Selena Gomez. Her face, she's dead in the face. Like, she's not giving me face. She could, you know, perked her lips up a little bit, smiled, you know, just a little bit of teeth, mouth open. She's giving me just, I'm staring in the camera. You know what I'm saying? Realness. But I needed her to, like, you crack a smile, girl. She just takes herself a bit too seriously. She's not giving me any type of face. But the body, the dress, she looks gorgeous. But I think she could have did more, okay? She needs to smize with the eyes, okay? I'm in my Tyra Banks bag right now. I needed her to smize a bit. She just looks dead, like a voodoo doll. But, you know, like I said, the body is giving. You know what I'm saying? I love these little flowery things. The dress is on point. I would definitely rock that. Very classy. Okay, he wears this leather outfit to every award show. Sir, I'm going to need you to either... Pick a different color, a different pattern. He's always in leather. I like the braids. That's all I have for him. He looks hot and bothered. Next. 
Why is Christian Combs dressed like he just he just looks like a old man? Like he like he should be. I somebody said he looked like the man from Waiting to Exhale. Somebody said that I was cracking up. They said he looked like he should be on the VMAs just throwing oranges. You greasy bitch! Do y'all remember that man from Waiting to Exhale when she didn't want to go meet his kids and he came through with that hot ass vest was throwing fucking oranges and shit? You greasy bitch! I was gonna introduce you to my mama and my kids. That is how Christian Combs is looking right now. I'm gonna need him to get out of his daddy's closet, okay, and dress his age. He looks like a 35 year old man, just arms crossed. He looked just like his daddy though. He that is his daddy's twin. He looked just like Diddy. And he got a nice body though. I will give them arms are arming. He do got a nice body. I will give him that. But this, no. You look like you should be throwing oranges at the window because the girl stood you up. That is the vibe that we're getting on social media. Next. All right, Gunner. Now, Gunner. <laughs> now, Gunner done lost a lot of weight. Yeah, Gunner done went from having a BBL. Remember he had that big old BBL booty? <laughs> Gunner has lost a lot of weight. Gunner looks good, okay? Gunner is also working out. Um, he looks good. Gunner looks good. He done lost that BBL booty. Okay, his face is chiseled, but I'm sorry. He's giving me auntie vibes, okay? The shoulder pad, these feathers. He's giving me somebody's auntie at a funeral, okay? Uh, four weddings and a funeral type vibes. I'm not feeling the outfit, Gunner. I'm glad he lost the weight, though. He seems happier. He seems healthier, but he's giving me auntie at a funeral. He's looking like he about to jump in the casket, okay? Oh, no, not my baby! No! Sorry, that's the vibe I'm getting from Gunner, okay? I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. That's the vibe. I'm sorry, Gunner. We love you, but uh, he's giving me auntie at a funeral vibes, okay? Yeah, I don't care. You can try and look tough. Absolutely. And then he got a pearl necklace. Oh, no. not I didn't even see the pearl necklace, Chad. Oh, God. He, oh, oh, oh. Had to clutch my invisible damn pearls. Yeah, he's giving me auntie vibes, especially with the pearl necklace. Or is that diamonds? I don't know. Maybe it's diamonds. It's, it's looking pearly from over here, but maybe it's diamonds. It's too short. It's too short, too feminine. Um, if you're going to wear diamonds, I need to, you know, do my chain, hang low, do it, wobble to it. I need those type of diamonds. I don't need ones that look like chokers, okay? Auntie vibes, next. <laughs> okay. Chloe Bailey. She looks cute here. She's giving, this is what Selena needed to give, okay? Selena, I needed you to give this type of face. You see Chloe, she's, she's looking spicy. She's smizing with her eyes, her pose. We see you, sis. She looks good. She said, uh, Funky Dineva, I came to eat, okay? So, yeah, she's, she's, she's replying back to the haters. She looks classy. She don't got her cooch all out. I like it. She looks very classy, very demure. I love it. She looks gorgeous. Hair, fresh retwist. The makeup is makeup in. It's not too much. It's not too over the top. Chloe did that. She looks really, really good. Really good. Okay, Ashanti. We got to talk about this. We got, we got to talk about Ashanti in this fucking purse. Okay? First of all. Let me, I want y'all to see me when I say this. Hold on, let me come in a little bit closer, okay? I see a lot of people who are here for this reunion with Ashanti and Nelly. I'm going to keep it real with you. As uh, somebody who was here when their relationship first started in the 2000s and shit, I'm not here for him spinning the block. I'm going to need her in this SD bag. She got that shit made on SD. I'm going to need her to go sit down somewhere with this bag. I like her outfit. I like the turtles on the titties. Ashanti got body. I love the outfit. The outfit is outfitting, okay? I'm not feeling the purse. I'm not here for this reunion, and maybe it's not my place. I just don't give a damn about their reuniting. He disrespected her far too many times for me. And he really was not claiming her like that. Everybody wants to rewrite history. We had to, like, literally put pieces together to even see that they were even together. There was just nothing. We got nothing from their relationship. We didn't really even know that they were really a real couple until after they broke up. 
Then all the tea was spilt about him, you know, uh, cheating on her and everything else. And at first he tried to act like, well, I just want to be low key. I just want to be low key. But then when he got with Miss Jackson, remember he got with Floyd Mayweather's ex, Chantel Jackson. He wouldn't shut the fuck up when he got with her. They had a reality TV show. He was all lovey-dovey. He gave none of that to Ashanti. So I feel away. I feel away. He gave none of that to Ashanti. And now she's sitting here with a damn SD bag with his face on it. I don't give a damn if that's the first time y'all met Ashanti. Quit looking thirsty. You are auntie age now, okay? Me and you are both aunties. And as aunties, I'm going to need you to do better. She's over here flossing this damn bag with this man's face on it. The only thing I want to see at your big age is a ring. Is he going to finally marry you? Are you going to finally have a baby? That's all we want to know at this point. Since you're going to swing the block back with Nelly, are y'all going to actually take it there? Because at this point, I feel like Ashanti's the bigger star. He's fallen. And this is just me keeping around. I don't care who gets mad. He has fallen off. We ain't heard nothing from Nelly since them allegations were out. Remember, he got caught with meth on the bus. He's had all types of nonsense. Meanwhile, Ashanti been thriving. She's out here doing versus battles. She's performing. She's on tour. Ashanti's doing her thing now. Now he want to swing back? The fact that he had to jump on stage with NLE Chopper tells me he ain't got nothing else going on. He out here doing, it's getting hot in here with NLE Chopper. I feel like he's trying to swing back and use her energy now because Ashanti's back. You know, she got a little resurgence from the verses from 2020. People love Shanti. I'm just not here for this. Don't show me no damn bag. You show me a ring, Auntie. Auntie Ashanti! here for this bag i don't give a damn but oh it's so cute oh it's a bag oh nelly's face is on no because he treated her like trash when they were together barely claimed the girl y'all know we don't forget shit barely claimed that girl she was in love with nelly but see nelly was more popping back then remember that's when murder inc fell out and she wasn't you know her music wasn't really hitting and nelly was the bigger star so you couldn't tell nelly shit so to me, at your big age, I don't want to see no bag with a face on it, ma'am. Absolutely not. We want to see a ring. We want to see commitment, Auntie Ashanti. But she looks good, though. Ashanti looks good. But I'm just, I'm not here for this, you know, with him spinning the block. I'm not here for this. Everybody's calling him uncle and all these, nah, no. Unk needs to keep on unking. <laughs> Go the fuck away. <laughs> I want Ashanti to have her moment. I'm a big Ashanti fan. I want her to have her moment. I don't like that Nelly's tied to everything that she does. You know, I get it. You know, she hasn't been lucky in love in years. You know, I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure the peen was good. But, yeah, I'm just, I'm not feeling this reunion. A lot of people are celebrating it. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. Unless he's going to, like, do right by her and, you know, marry her. Don't, don't waste her time. Auntie Ashanti, you don't have another 20 years to waste. You wasted 10 years on this man. He didn't propose. He did none of that. Then he got with Chantel Jackson and wouldn't shut the fuck up. Oh, he was in love. Chantel had his nose wide open. And then they finally broke up. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, if they're going to be together. Oh, y'all said he got a little peen. How y'all know? Ooh. Oh, didn't his peen pics leak a while back? Oh, shit. Okay, well. Well, sometimes it's the motion of the ocean, freaks. Look at y'all. His being little. It, it could be the motion. Maybe he can, you know, he might he might eat it well. I don't know shit. But like I said, <laughs> maybe they're oral on point. I don't know, honey. But like I said, I don't want him to waste her time. I'm not here for that. I do not want him to waste her time. So we're going to move on from Auntie Ashanti and that SD bag. Who's next? They just never close their mouth. I don't know. I just feel like neither of them can close their mouth. Their mouth is just always open. Just <laughs> Next. Oh, no. I know this ain't who I think it is. 
fuck is she wearing? She got socks on her arms? I know this ain't Dochi. What it is, ho? What's up? Oh, no. What is up with this outfit? No, she looks very mannish and with the hat. It's like, it's giving me man women tees with the manly socks on her arms, the trucker hat. And then the, this is not a good look. And I like her. I love her music. Yeah, this is not a good look. I'm not feeling this. Come on, sis. Come on, sis. I'm going to need you to rep for the dark-skinned girls. This ain't cute at all. None of this is flattering. This was a miss. Come on, child. All right, Fat Joe. All right, he looks, he looks, all right, yeah. All right, he looks presentable. Okay, David O. All right, he look cute, he look cute. Okay. I, who's this? He looked like he's just, I don't know, going to the movies or something. Who is this? Blue? Young Blue? Um, okay. All right, Young Blue. All right, next. Ain't this a Jamaican girl? Sensia? Okay. Was she invited to the VMAs? Why is, she, why is her background just gray? Wasn't she at the VMAs? <laughs> Oh, she in front of a gray background. Look, it's giving me glamour shots, 1992. Just stand in front of the gray background. All right, next. Next. Oh, no. <laughs> Billy Porter out here giving auntie uncle vibes. All right, Billy, we see you, Pooh. He said he, you know, he he sold his house and bought him an outfit, bitch. <laughs> All right, we see you. I don't know what is going on with these tracks. He done glued to his head. The silvery lipstick. All right, Uncle. Uncle Auntie Porter, we see you. And he's giving fierce face. All right. Who's this? Oh, that's that white girl, uh, Justine Valentine or something like that from uh, Wildin' Out. Okay. It's giving lingerie, cabaret. Okay, cute. Is this Sin Santana? I don't like it. It's not flattering to her shape. She's a bit too thick for this outfit. Yes, yeah, it's, it's too much. The gloves are pushing her arm chunk up. Yeah, yeah this, no, nah, I don't like it. She's pretty, but I don't like the outfit, the pose. Yeah, it's not giving anything. I'm, I'm not getting anything from it. Next. Ah! Oh! oh, no, what is this? Oh! Oh! Why is, why is that all up in her coochie like that? It, you can see her stretch marks. Now I'm here for that though, you know what I mean? Cause I got some stretch marks. So, you know, I'm, I'm here for them showing the raw untouched, but damn, that's not a good outfit. I don't like it. Young Miami is way too pretty to be dressed like this. This is this is ugly. I'm sorry. This is not cute. You can see her. I don't know if that's a C-section scar. I feel like I'm having to like, like I can scratch and sniff her cooch. Like what the hell is this? Like this ain't cute. Come on. I like the glasses though. The glasses are giving. The shoes are cute. But this, like what, it, like who made this outfit? Is this Versace or some shit? Like what is, y'all know, I don't know who, who done made had this. Who made this outfit? It's a tummy tuck scar. Oh, she had a tummy tuck. Oh, shit. Why would you wear something that's so, like, up, you know what I mean? That's so cut up that you can see your tummy tuck scar? No, that ain't cute. I don't like this for her. And she has a cute shape. 
You know what I mean? She done, you know, did her little plastic surgery. She has a cute shape. Beautiful girl, but this is not cute at all. It's just too far per coochie. It's giving me like Snuggie in the coochie vibes. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't like it. I'm sorry. I don't like it. She's too pretty for that. Whoever fired, whoever put that on her needs to be fired expeditiously, okay? Expeditiously. This is cute. I'm feeling this. She looks so adorable. Coco Jones. This is what I'm talking about. She's slim. She's trim. She's not busty. But do you see how her top fits her well? They made sure to, you know, tighten the belt to the third, you know, little loop. This fits her well. She doesn't, she doesn't look like a muscle builder. They're not trying to push her titties up. This is how they should did Glorilla. Okay? Slim and trim. I love this look. Very cute, classy. She has such a beautiful voice, too, Coco Jones. Gorgeous. She ate. Okay. Pretty V looks like Sierra here. She's giving face. I love the fact that she, all the, all the va va vooms in her back. Tall, thin, model-esque. I'm here for this. She looks really pretty, classy. Yes, she looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. I love this. Looks really good on her. Okay. Auntie Tiffany. It's cute. I don't know why the camera kept panning to her, though. I was I was tired of the camera constantly panning to her. She kept trying to be in Doja Cat's shot during when Doja Cat was coming down the steps. She was doing a bit much at the VMAs, but I think this is cute. I think she looks good here. She's giving the smiles with the eyes. The pose is cute. We ain't forgot about, you know, the, the fuck shit that you did on video, but this is cute here. This is cute. We ain't forgot, ma'am. <laughs> Somebody said, who invited Tiffany? Oh, gosh. All right, next. All right, let me talk about um, Miss Holly, okay? She's definitely giving me pregnancy teas. She looked gorgeous. Makeup on point, face on point. This orange dress is gorgeous. It looks great on her complexion. But the way them titties are sitting right there, they look like they're filling up with milk, okay? I'm just saying, I'm getting pregnancy vibes. Um, even if you guys watch the video of her and her sister, uh, giving the award, if you notice, she kept making sure that her dress, let me come in close. She kept fanning her dress out while she was on stage. You could tell she was kind of uncomfortable. She was making sure that that dress didn't hug her tummy. She kept playing with the dress, trying to, you know, kind of fan it out a little bit so it wouldn't hit on her tummy. She's definitely knocked up, okay, by DD. DDG, DDG, I believe that's his name. Um, they're going to have a cute baby, though. I don't know why she's hiding it. It's not like you're 13, ma'am. You're a grown woman. Um, I don't know why the internet cares so much, but okay. But I think she looks good here. This is a beautiful picture. Could be in a magazine, but yeah, definitely, definitely giving me glowing. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to be a mom to be tease. That's what I'm getting from her. But she looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. So that was it. Um... Let me see. I think we got most of them. Oh, hold on. A Boogie with the hoodie. <laughs> My son loves A Boogie with the hoodie. Anytime he comes to Minneapolis, they are going to go to his concert and support Mr. A Boogie with the hoodie child. Okay. I'm liking the suit. <laughs> it's kind of giving me, you know, Nigerian pastor, you know, like he's about to preach the word. Hallelujah. Amen. It's kind of giving me Nigerian pastor vibes. But I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm feeling the suit. It's cute. Something different. I'm glad he's not up there with a, with a hoodie on. Something different. I don't know who this is. But I like it. I like the color. Looks good on him. Who is he? Oh, Don Tolliver. Okay. I've heard his name. I don't I don't know what he looks like. I've always heard his name. He looks nice. I don't know about the pose. Looks like he's about to go surfing or some shit. Okay, Don Tolliver. All right. All right, Offset. He looks like he should be part of a mariachi band. That big old belt. <laughs> you know, you know, one thing about Offset, what he gonna do? He gonna pose. He gonna, you know what I'm saying? He gonna come looking shitty sharp. But he looks like he's missing a hat, like a little mariachi hat. You know what I'm saying? Ay, 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 
That's the vibe I'm getting from Offset right now. But he looks good, though. We see you, Set. We see you. I don't like this. This looks like two different outfits. I like this from the see-through mesh up. I don't know what this is down here. It looks like they just threw a coat on her knees. So here, cover your knees. I don't like it. I don't like it, Callie. I can't get with her. These <laughs> big-ass shoulder pads, this weird jacket. I, I've been off of Demi ever since she tried to do the they, them. She tried to be they, them. No one gave a shit. Nobody fed into her delusion. Now she's back being a she. She lost me with the they, them, so I, I pay her no mind anymore. This jacket is atrocious. The hair is giving, though. I like the hair. The makeup is light. It's giving me vampire realness. Um, that's all I got. Good luck to them. Next. Okay, I just was introduced to her. Ain't this Carol G? I don't like it. It looks just, yeah, I don't like it. The hair, no. She was doing like a lot of freaky shit on stage. I don't like it. Um, yeah, don't, I don't like the outfit. Next. Ain't this Nessa from the Teen Mom interviews? Girl. All right, Nessa. She look cute. Next. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Why is NLE out here dressed like it's 1974? The 70s called. They want their outfit back. You who was born in 2001. I like the color purple, but I'm not feeling this. He just, he looks like Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Next. <laughs> looks like about to start break dancing. Megan looks good here. I'm feeling this. This is more classy. Even though there's sheer, there's some panties. The dress is long. It fits her body well. She's giving fierce face. Her makeup is on point. She's glowing. She looks really good here. I'm feeling this for Megan. This looks really good. She's lost a lot of weight. She looks good. She looks good. Yeah, she's definitely posing. She's hitting her angles. Yeah, she looks good here. Really good. Okay, what the fuck is this? What is this? And then she's licking it. See, Sweetie's one of them girls. She thinks because she's cute, she can wear anything. Girl, this stupid ass bone has got to go, child. That bone by your head, it's got to go. It looks like, yeah, but, dad, but, no, okay? Looks like something off of the Flintstones. She don't get the hell up out of here with this, and then she's licking on it. Somebody said, looks like, yeah, but, dad, yeah, but, dad, but don't. Get her the hell up out of here with this. She was struggling with the teleprompter. Now she's struggling with this. Damn it, I can freestyle better than Sweetie. I'm not feel. I don't get it. It's not cute. It's not flattering. It'd be cute without the bones. I, I don't get it. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. They're a modern stage family. From the town of bit. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she's giving me is Flintstones vibes. All right, we got Doja Cat. Doja has been freeing her nipple lately. She wants y'all to see her nipples and her implant scar for some reason. But I think this outfit is actually cute. It's giving what she's trying to convey, which is always something creepy. It's giving spider web vibes, um, the blonde hair, the makeup the spider lashes. I'm actually feeling this for Doja. I think this is cute here. It's not too demonic and crazy. I hate her tattoos though. Tattoos just ruin it for me. But I think this outfit's cute. I like her outfit. I do. A young mother in- Next. All right, so <laughs> we, we've gone through everything. Let me pull up, um, let me share this page here. 
So this was little Nas X. What is, like, is he supposed to be somebody's auntie in the church? He has a little Bible in his hand. Again, I've been over his outfits. He just needs to dress like a little gay boy. All like I've said before in past videos and live streams, he always looks forced. He always looks forced to dress over the top at award shows. But yet and still, when I go onto his Instagram page, he's just dressed like a little normal gay boy, T-shirt and jeans. So, yeah, it's giving me auntie in the church realness. She looks like Madonna. I know it's not, but she's giving me like like a virgin tease. Sabrina Carpenter, yeah. She's giving me Madonna. Cute dress. Here goes some more pictures of, of Sweetie. This is just trash. I just don't like it. It'd have been cute without the bone. She's pretty. She didn't need all that by her face. Ain't that the the Emilio girl? One of them. Her dress is cute though. I like the dress. Which one? Dixie. Okay. Sophia Carlson. I don't know who that is. Uh, who is this? Why is her ass cheeks just okay? Just just don't cut out some ass cheeks. Okay, BB. She makes good music. I don't I don't know what this is about with the ass. And then is that a horse tail? Okay. I write this. Next. This is cute. I like this. This is cute. I'm feeling this. Madeline Klein in Givenchy. This is cute. I like that. This is Anita. I don't like this. I think she looked better during her performance. I don't like this. It looks weird. I don't like it. I love this outfit on Coco. She looks beautiful. I like Nelly Furtado. I thought this was cute. She's giving a lot of back. She's not wearing no panties. Um, it's cute. Nelly Furtado looks really good for her age. I can't get with this outfit, the hair. She just looks like she just rolled out of bed and just threw this on. Yeah, I'm not liking it. I'll set in that big old belt, child. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love Chloe's outfit. This is really cute. All right, Miss Glow. All right, so I think we, we hit on everybody, child. Who is this? Okay, yeah, we hit on everybody. All right, let me come back on the screen. That was fun. That was fun. Like I said, I enjoy doing the reviews. I hope I made y'all laugh. Let me read some of these comments. You know, again, no shade, just my own personal opinion. That's all. Let's see here. Oh, oh we got a lot of super chats. Oh, my gosh. Let me go to the top. Uh, EEG says, sidebar, I love your video on King Harris. He reminds me of Joffrey from Game of Thrones. Mmm. Yes, King, he, he kind of gives me sadistic vibes. I did not like how he did that homeless man. That was not okay at all. Very, very sadistic. So thank you for the super chat, love. Um, Faye Wynn sent 1999. Thank you so much for the support, sis. Appreciate you. Uh, David says, hey, auntie. With two hearts, hey, David, thanks for coming through, love. Um, Nina Kink sent $10, says, just stopping by to say hello to my fellow Leo. Love what you do, and I appreciate you, girl. Thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Thank you for the support, sis. Uh, Dini Darcel, gifted five memberships. Thank you so much, Dini. Uh, Tiffany says, I will catch the playback. By the way, I'm doing an essay on your channel for class about discourse communities. Hopefully it brings more tea sippers. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Renee says, T, you look good, girl. Thank you. I appreciate you, love. Um, let's see. SP sent $10. Says, hey, T, looking lovely like your name. I'm a calligrapher, and I will be an exhibitor at the Women's Expo in October. I know... You sold your tea at the event a few years back. Any advice, please, and thank you. Um, 
The main advice is just really to talk to people, be personable. You know, um, don't just wait for people to come to your booth. Be like, hey, hey, you know, come over here. Come check this out. You know, just be very, very friendly. The Women's Expo is a really fun place, and it's a good place to, like, also network. So don't forget to, like, make friends with your neighbors in the booth next to you because you might need them for something. They might need you for something. So it's definitely a good vibe, and a lot of people do come out there to spend money and to support people. So definitely just, you know, just treat everyone with respect. Thank them for coming. If they don't, you know, if they can't buy something right there and then, tell them to come back. Let them know that you'll be there the entire weekend. Make sure you have business cards, brochures, flyers, and things like that. And good luck to you. You're going to love the Women's Expo. So thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Trixie said, hey, pretty girl looking gorgeous per usual. Just wanted to show some love. Thank you so much, sis. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Black Love says... I think it was funny and shady. P. Diddy had his son do Mace's part petty. Yeah, but, you know, it would have been even more petty if it was Justin. Because remember, Justin's the one who got the publishing. He was the one in Pampers at the time of More Money, More Problems. I don't think Christian was even born. But, you know, he put Justin um, down for publishing. I remember Mace, was he wrote about that in his rap when he was going off on Diddy. So... That would have been even more petty had he used Justin. But, you know, Tristan, you know, ne next best thing. Let's see here. Um, that Virgo says, I think the reason Justin got back with NSYNC is to avoid the drama with Britney, with Britney's book being released next month. Ooh. I didn't know she was releasing a book next month. And so is she going to be talking about Justin and their whole situation in the book? That's going to be very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Miranda says, you know that Tyrese thing is a lot deeper. DJ Envy is creating a defense for when the feds come knocking just to make a witness sound crazy. Oh, yeah, I definitely think that DJ Envy is playing games, you know, with the whole Tyrese situation. It's funny he has all this smoke for Tyrese, but not the people who have been complaining for months online that him and Caesar Pina allegedly scammed them. He hasn't talked about this. He hasn't addressed it. So I don't know. I just, I just find it funny that he's just had all this smoke. He was beefing with Gunplay at one point, Rick Ross. I think at this point he's doing this for ratings because of Breakfast Club, they're not getting the ratings that they once were getting. So, but that's my opinion. Let's see here. Um, Yardy Moisten, $10, says, I blame 100% of the great incident on single mothers, brother polite been creepy since 2014. Ladies, don't leave your daughters alone. We're not talking about polite right now, but we will. But thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Rosie says, hey T, I'm a college student. I love your videos and deep dive. Do you know when you'll be opening the Discord for new people? Been dying to join. What are we in? We're in the September. I might open it this month. Um, I haven't decided yet, but it might be this month because we haven't opened it in like four months. So it will either be sometime this month or definitely in October. Um, it's a whole child. It's a whole thing when we open the Discord. So it's a whole like six step process. So that's why I don't open it up too often because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it will be open, so just stay tuned. I usually announce it on Patreon or on the YouTube membership. So those are the people who get dibs to come into the Discord when it's open. So thank you for the super chat, love. Um, let's see here. Maya says, this was the Taylor Swift Awards. I definitely agree. Uh, Fatima says, T crossing her eyes, talking about Diddy had me dying. Yes, because Diddy just be making up stuff. I, I'm, I'm just convinced. He could have just went up there got his award, and just told a factual story. Did he just be talking, just be talking? Um, let's see here. Adriana says, the clips of Sweetie reading the teleprompter had me dying. The screen must have been moving too fast. It was like Tiffany on America's Next Top Model. I felt bad. Yeah, that teleprompter situation was funny. Let me see if I can find it. Her reading this teleprompter was a mess. Okay, here we go. We're going to watch this real quick. Let me pull that up. We're going to watch Sweetie. 
Okay. To be in such great company, holding it down alongside my girl, Sweetie. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I am feeling excellent. Better now. I know. That's right. Oh, I am so excited for tonight, too. And I can't wait to see the fashion and some of my... Oh, they're playing music and stuff. Hold on. Is that the only one? Yeah. They're playing music, so I don't want to play too much of it. But yeah, her teleprompter reading left a lot to, like, to be... I don't know. It was just, it was not good at all. But to be fair, reading a teleprompter is not easy. It takes a lot of practice. She really should have been practicing on paper first with everything that's going to be written. So that way she had it memorized and that way she'd feel more comfortable reading the teleprompter. So again, she's just, she's just pretty. And that's all I get from her is just cute. Um, she really should have been practicing and taking it serious. If you're going to host and you're going to, you know, talk on national television, you have to get the readings down. You have to practice, 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 because it's not easy. It's not something you can just wing. It's something you have to practice at. So hopefully she learned her lesson and she'll do better next time. Um, let's see here. Hazaya says, hey, auntie, this is your nephew from the east side of Charlotte. Albemarle Road. I know that's right. To be exact, side note. Did you work at OnStar in Charlotte? And Diddy seems to be the Grim Reaper. I never knew he ended that many people in college also. Yes, yes, at Howard University was a big dance. Him and Heavy D were throwing it, and a bunch of people ended up, like, suffocating. They were smashed against the doors and everything else. Um, no, I never worked at OnStar. I worked at City Financial in Charlotte. So I worked at City doing auto financing and repossession. So, yep. I did. I know right where Albemarle Road is. That's East Charlotte, honey. So thank you for the super chat, love. Appreciate you. Shout out to all my peoples down in Charlotte. I need to get back down there. I ain't been down there in a long time. Um, let's see here. Uh, Kiss Me create, uh, create, wait, Creatively says, I'm tired of talentless Diddy trying to push his equally talentless, talentless son on us. Stop trying to make French. <laughs> Stop trying to make Fetch happen. Carisha's outfit was strange and looked hairy. Oh my gosh. Y'all are going in. Yeah, I think he is trying to push his son on us and I just, I don't care. I don't care. Where was that at? Somebody said it wasn't at Howard. I thought it was at Howard. Where was that at? The whole thing with him and Heavy D. It did happen. It might've been not at Howard, but it was somewhere that it happened. If y'all can write the exact location that the party happened with Diddy, it was in NYC. It was at a city college in Harlem. Okay, thank you. I knew it was at a college. So what? I knew he went to Howard, but it was at a city college in Harlem. Thank you, Leticia. But yeah, it was several people who had died. Um, I don't think he ever got sued or anything. But yeah, that was like the first introduction to P. Diddy that I remembered. So this football story, I, I don't remember him ever being potentially almost drafted. But okay, Diddy. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, Swizzy says, Diddy is such a petty queen. He finally gave his artist publishing last week just to have his son cosplay Mace's verse. I'm more, more problems. That was a slap in the face. It really was. It really was. Thank you so much for the super chat. Let's see here. Okay, so we got, hold on here. We got a 99.99 super chat from Brenda Messer. She says, oh my God, I love you. Discovered you about three years ago and haven't looked back since. Thank you for always coming through with the sense. God bless. Thank you so much for the super chat, love. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being a long time supporter on my channel. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here. Eyes to the soul. He sent $100.00. They said, enjoying the shade. Thank you so much once again for the super chat as well. Shout out to you. Thank you for always supporting my channel. So shout out, honey, to, to the to the money bag people in the house. I appreciate all y'all just supporting and sending the super chats. Um, let's see here. Tiniest Kiwi, tiniest little Kiwi, sent $10. Says, hey, lovely, did you see the Stray Kids text the K-pop acts at the VMAs? I was hoping to see your reaction on them. No, I did not see that at all. So I can't speak on it because I did not see that. But thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. Um, Desi says, it's Esty. Uh, T, I'm dying. 
at what is it? Etsy? At it. Etsy, well, wherever it is, that's where she got that damn purse with Nelly. You know, they do all them customizations on that site. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. Uh, lady Lex says, Gunna looks like the first lady at the Kogic church. <laughs> oh my gosh. He really did look like somebody's auntie going to a funeral. It's Etsy. Hold on, S. Rogers says it's Etsy. Oh, I've always called it Etsy. So it's Etsy with the long E. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. I, somebody said it sounds like STD. <laughs> Etsy, I never knew it was pronounced Etsy. That is too funny, okay. I shop on that. I support the people who make products. I'm always shopping on that. I never knew how to pronounce it, though. That's one thing that the chat going to do. They're going to they gonna get on my pronunciation and help me figure it out. So I appreciate y'all for that. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Um, Ariana sent 499 says that. Oh, no, we read that one. Um, hold up. Boo Baby Boo 2 says all the new girls look like they dress themselves. I agree. I agree. I'm just really disappointed um, on how, like, on, on Dochi, how she looked. I just, I wanted her to eat. I wanted her to eat. Let's see here. Oh, uh, Ramos sent five says, who have glistened Mary? Stop it, T. That had me weak. I'm telling you, I was so, let me see if I can find a video of Mary, so y'all can see what I'm talking about. A Mary J at the uh, at the VMAs. I was so disappointed. I'm like, who greased her thighs like this? Let's see if we can find it, child. Hold on, we gotta find the latest. Come on. This one's only shown half her outfit. I'm trying to see if I can find a full video. Okay. Oh, I thought I was playing. Oh, I got a close-up shot. So y'all don't think I'm just over here bullshitting. Hold on. Found a close-up. I'm not over-exaggerating. Let me go ahead and share my screen, child. For y'all who missed this. Y'all don't miss nothing. This is our good sis, Mary. Do y'all see that? How from down, look at that. Look at that. Looking like some, you know, just greased. How you go from Crisco to no no? Just how you go from it's nice and glistening, and then you get up here, she's ashy. They did her wrong. They didn't even glisten her stomach. Then look at her face. That's what I'm saying. Like they didn't do it right. You don't leave this, like, even have her tattoos ashy. How is this part of her tattoo glistening and this part dry? Damn flower look wilted. I'm going to need y'all to do her better than that. See? It's two different shades. I was hot watching this on video. Y'all don't miss shit, child. I love me some Mary. I don't miss nothing. I said, no, they didn't finish not, you know, not finish glistening her legs. I just going to stop right there. She got on that short ass skirt. I was hot when I seen that. I said, what the hell? Not them half glistening her legs. That tattoo from the bottom down just is shiny and healthy. From the top up, it's wilted and shit and dry. <laughs> not the wilted flowers in the chat. <laughs> I'm not fooling with y'all. Not the wilted flowers in the chat, honey. Oh, my gosh. Let's see here. Uh... Get in lucky in Kentucky says, have you ever considered visiting Kentucky? To be honest with you, no. But I told all of my friends, and I even told the Discord, I want to be on some like grown woman shit this year. I want to go see other states. I want to like go like on some like nature retreats. I want to go to states. Like I've, I've done all the clubbing I can do in Miami, in Atlanta, in LA, in New York. Like I love those cities, but I want to start going to like 
little cities. I want to go to like Yellowstone. I want to go see Mount Rushmore. I want to go to North Dakota. I want to go to like Wyoming. I want to go to maybe even Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? I want to like do like a road trip with like maybe like 10 cool people. You know, maybe rent like two minivans or something. We just do like a road trip. Y'all down? Like I really want to do, I want to see other stuff. You know what I mean? Because I just feel like the way this world is going, child, global warming, we may not have too much of a country left. Between these earthquakes, hurricanes, fires, the Everglades are shrinking. I want to see all this nature shit, you know what I'm saying, before it disappears. Like, I've never been to Yellowstone. I want to see the geysers. I want to, you know, swim in, like, the springs and shit. You know what I mean? I, I, I want to, like, do stuff. So that's what we were talking about on Discord. Me and my friends, we went to church this weekend. So at the church, we went and, like, ate. And we were talking about that. I'm like, I really want to do other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Outside of just like clubbing and, you know, you know, just kicking it. I want to do other things. Like I want to go to like Roswell, New Mexico. I want to go to Montana. Yes, like, you know, them little cities. I don't know if they're little or not. I just never thought to go to them. So I really do. I want to go to like South Dakota. I want to go to Mount Rushmore. I want to do like a little road trip. You know what I mean? You know, like I've been to like a few like the plantations. I like that. I want to go to some of the plantations like in Louisiana. I've been to a lot of them like in Charleston and in the Carolinas, you know, like Brattonville Plantation, some of the big ones on the coast. I want to do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I just feel like a lot of this stuff is not going to be around and I want to see stuff. You know, I want to see things. I don't know how to drive no RV now. Somebody said, who going to get to your RV? Now, you're damn, damn well I can't drive no RV. Barely drive a damn SUV. But, you know, I figure somebody can drive, <laughs> okay? I'll try, but I've never driven nothing that big. But I really do. I think that'd be so fun. Do like a little, you know, camping. I ain't sleeping outdoors. I need, you know, indoor plumbing. I need, you know, a bed. But, you know, drive. I want to drive and go see stuff. I think it would be fun. I think it would just be fun. So, yeah, maybe I will go to Kentucky, you know? So, thank you for that. I really would love to do this. Um, let me see here. Somebody says, ooh, hold on, it just disappeared. It refreshed. Tamika White sent 199. She says, what are your thoughts on Dana Chanel? I don't really know what happened with her. I heard that she was indicted. Let me put in her name. Somebody had wrote something about her being, oh, oh, they said she's ordered to pay. So, okay, hold on, let me pull this up. Remember when I last? on her everybody said i was jealous and i was a hater go ahead and share this tab honey they got her front and center it looks like you're using ad blocker you damn right bitch next let's find another let's, oh is it on the news let's see here oh shit, she made it to the news this is embarrassing but y'all swerping down. Y'all love these finance gurus. Anybody who speaks up against them is a hater. They're jealous. So we're going to go ahead and watch. There's a news clip on this. We're going to watch what happened to Dana Chanel. Remember, I told y'all, y'all only were giving her any type of attention was because she was pretty. Anybody was like, yeah, this sounds scammy was a hater. But let's go ahead and watch the this. The local social media influencer has been ordered to pay thousands of dollars to her customers that she's accused of misleading. In 2021, Dana Chanel, whose real name is Casey Oliveira, was sued by the Pennsylvania Attorney General for allegedly taking money from customers without delivering services. She operated a credit help company and a mobile app development service. Well, she now has to pay more than $87,000 to dozens of clients. The restitution payments are part of a settlement agreement with the AG's office. All right, so it looks like that's what happened to Miss Dana Chanel. So this is my issue with all this stuff. Cause I had, I heard what rumblings. Today, Hold on. To the state police barracks and okay. I had heard rumblings, but I did not know what all had happened. Now, this is my issue. Because like I said, when I spoke on her a few years ago and I was telling folks, why y'all paying this woman all this money to build y'all an app? Y'all are paying her thousands of dollars when y'all can literally find somebody to build you, just you, a personal app. You can find people who work in tech. 
You can find people on damn Fiverr. You can find people on all these social media tech sites who, you know, they, they need side gigs and side hustles. Then y'all were going to her to repair your credit. And I kept telling y'all credit repair is nothing but a scam. You can do this yourself. I talked about this years ago in one of my credit videos. You know what I'm saying? And I help people for free. But again, y'all put people on a pedestal based on their followers, how they look, if they're dripped down in Chanel. Same way all these people come into the community and scam. Jay Morrison, y'all ran to give this man all types of money for the Tulsa, Oklahoma fund. He ain't built shit yet. He's done nothing but lose money. People were throwing money at him. And the, and the thing is, when are we going to start holding some of these black platforms accountable? It's okay, I'll wait. Because last time I checked, Dana Chanel was also on, um, what was that show that Tamar's sister was on? Wasn't like The Circle or something like that in Atlanta? They had her on there. You had The Breakfast Club. You know, promoting people like Caesar Pina, promoting Jay Morrison. So you have a lot of these black outlets who are also promoting scammers in the community. And anybody who talks against these scammers and who says, hey, do your own research. You don't have to pay somebody to create an LLC. Stop being lazy. You know how I created my LLC? I sat down. I met up with one of my friends. We did research together and we filed for free. And just because you start an LLC, that doesn't mean that you're just necessarily in business. It's like everybody wants to be a boss or a CEO, but they don't know what it takes. And a lot of these people, the only reason why they have money to floss to y'all and act like they're bigger than what they are is because you guys are paying them. The money that they're flossing is the classes that y'all are paying for, is the courses. That is the hustle. You know, but again, like I said, when I talked about this years ago, I was ugly and I was a hater. So, you know, I shut it the fuck up. Y'all have fun getting scammed. I'm going to mind my black ass business and keep doing what I do with my own little, you know, mini little real estate ventures. And matter of fact, kudos to me. I got my ROI yesterday. We closed and the new people moved into the customized house that I built back in 2020. So good job, T. That's what I do when I do investing. Investing takes time. If you're really into real estate, you're not getting an ROI in six months. That's not how it works. You have to sell the property. You have to find the right buyer. And even then, because the interest rates were higher, I had a lot of people who wanted the house, but they didn't necessarily have the income because of the high interest rates. So I had to wait for the, the right buyer. And guess what? I had to pay not one, but two mortgages. See, people don't talk about that. They just act like they just got it in the bag and it's so easy. I was paying too. I had to pay on my old house and then this new house that we moved into. But I knew that. So I saved up just to make sure. And we kept going, kept going. We finally sold. They moved in. The new people, they love the house. They're very grateful. And I even gave them my snowblower because I don't like doing gas snowblowers. So I even threw in a free snowblower and they're very, very grateful. Like, but again, when people talk about stuff, I know it's not sexy. Oh, you built and you sold and it took years. Well, that's really how investments work. I know it's sexier to be up here in a Chanel brooch and you know what I'm saying? Hair, you know, fried, dyed and laid to the side, you know, drip down in Givenchy. I know that's sexier for me to stand in front of a Lamborghini and be like, oh my gosh, I, I made $100,000. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. A legitimate ROI can take several years sometimes before you even see any money coming in. So I'm very proud of myself. You know what I'm saying? Just doing this whole little customized home thing and just making my own little way and figuring things out and, and creating connections and with contractors and just really learning the whole real estate thing on how to build out a customized home. And those people love the home. They loved all the add-ons that I had on there. There were brand new homes in that same community selling for around the same price of my house. Them homes had been on the market for six months, still ain't sold. My house was only in the market for two months and I sold because I made my home very customized, big walk-in closet, custom closets. I put a lot into that house. 
So that way, when I got ready to sell, what you gonna do? Go with this one that's brand new, that has a closet this big, or go with this one with a walk-in pantry, walk-in closet, all these customizations. So that's how you gotta think when you're building. So I, I, I just, I don't get it. I just feel like, you know, I, I think more people are waking up now to a lot of these frauds out here, but it's just really sad like how people just take advantage of people and you guys give them your ear and y'all's money because of how they look or because of how they present themselves. But the average CPA that's on here that's just wearing a t-shirt and saying, hey, I actually have a finance degree. I actually went to school, you know, to be a CPA, to be a financial advisor. Y'all pay them no mind because they're not standing in front of a Lamborghini. Y'all didn't need to pay that woman to clean up y'all's credit. Y'all didn't need to pay her to do anything. So again, like I say, when are we going to hold black media accountable? Because black media promoted this girl. They promoted Jay Morrison. They promoted, you know, Caesar Pina. They promoted all these scammers, Brother Polite. It's sad. It's sad. There's no such thing as a get rich quick scheme. If there was, we'd all be rich. We would all be rich. And what people don't understand is once you start getting money, the key is not getting money, right? Because people can get money online, you can go viral, you can sell pussy. You can do all types of stuff to get money. It's how do you maintain it? How do you maintain it? People who are really trying to maintain their money, they're not spending it foolishly on designer goods and Lamborghinis and all this stuff. They're being smart with their money. They're being smart with their investments. So now, the money I got from that home, guess what? I'm not going to use it to pay down this mortgage quite yet. Why? Because right now, the interest rate is, what, 7% right now on average? So why take the money that I made from the seller of that home and just throw it towards this mortgage? No, I'm going to take that money and roll that into a high interest rate with a, a, a Roth IRA. Um, IRA and let that build because even though the interest rate is high right now for mortgages, which sucks, which I got to realize is in the banking industry, it's a good thing. So this is a time that y'all can start putting money into your high yield savings account. If you have a Edward Jones account, if you have an IRA, this is a time to start saving the money. Let the money that you have sit there and make money for you while these interest rates are high. So yes, it does suck in the mortgage part of it, right? But in the banking part, it's it's cool. So I'm going to take that money, roll it over, let it sit, let it build interest for a year. And then when the interest rate comes down, because what goes up has to come down. So once the interest rate comes down on the mortgages, refinance, pull that money out and put that towards the principal. But again, all of this takes time. That's boring to people. It sounds sexier to say, hey, I'm just going to go buy a brand new condo. Look at my condo. Look at my ocean view on Miami Beach. That's sexy. My plan is not sexy. Why? Because it's not, there's no instant gratification. You know, but it is what it is. I'd rather, you know, grow slow and be smart with my money and be smart with my investments, you know what I'm saying, than to turn around three, four years from now and you have nothing. All these people that have been out here, the, the Greg Cordones, the white scammers, the black scammers. It was just a hustle. And it's sad. And like I said, when I would say stuff, it was always you're a hater. You're jealous. You're just mad. You're broke. All this stupid stuff. It's like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, like no, everybody who's speaking on stuff is not necessarily broke. We're trying to help y'all out. Y'all don't give this lady all this money when literally... All you have to do is Google the information. Y'all, and that's the thing I never understand about people in this day and age. Y'all have the information at y'all's fingertips, but y'all don't want to do the research because it's too much work. Y'all want instant gratification. When we were growing up, we had to go to the library, go through the Dewey Decimal System. Okay, I'm bringing that shit back, honey. Who remembers the Dewey Decimal System? I'm not the only person who remembers the damn Dewey Decimal System. Everything in alphabetical order. And then when you find the book that you're looking for, you better hope somebody didn't check that book out. And then you sat and you read. And you took notes. 
y'all want somebody to get up on Clubhouse and, and spoon feed y'all. That's what y'all want. Y'all want Dana Chanel, Brother Polite, and all these scammers to spoon feed y'all. But then when real people are talking and letting y'all know, they're mad, they're haters. But now, let's fast forward three, four years. Where are there all these people whose names were popping all over social media? The Jay Morrisons, he's hiding. Dana Chanel, she got paid back all this money. Brother Polite, doing seven years. We're going to get on him in a second. So y'all, don't let these folks play you out your money. Everything that glitters is not gold. While these folks are bragging about what they have and, you know, this and that, you don't know what, what the real tea is behind the scenes. You don't know what their debt-to-income ratio is. Because when you're really doing investments, you can lose, you can win. Everything is not always a win. Like I said, I was paying two mortgages for two months straight. But that's just what it is. So... Thank you for that. I didn't mean to go on a whole tirade about Dana Chanel, but no, I, I'm going to kind of talk shit because I remember when I was calling this out, I was getting clowned and told I was a hater. And I'm like, why y'all believe in anything this girl says? Why? Just because she's pretty? Okay, well, I guess. You know, so it's sad. Um, oh, yeah, we got to talk about Suki. Thank you. I almost forgot about the Suki situation. We got to talk about Suki real quick. And then Erica Mena. And then Brother Polite. Perfect. Ooh, I've been on here for an hour and 31 minutes. Okay. Let's move on to Suki. Suki is a hot damn mess. Let me pull up this video. And I think it's on. Madi is back blogging on my new Instagram page. So if you're not following, make sure you guys follow lovely t, lovely t underscore underscore. That's the new Instagram page. So my manager told us to go back to blogging just because that's what people know me for. She's like, just, just go back to blogging, T. Just, just blog again. So we're going to go. This is my new page. So we're going to watch this video about Suki Hana. So this is the page, uh, lovely T underscore underscore. So my has already started posting. Um, so let's see here. Suki. This was her, I don't think she posted the video. Yeah, she didn't post the video just because we don't want to get any bullshit copyright. Hold on, let me see if I can find the video. We were posting about her and Delicious getting into it. Let me find the video, Suki crawling. This is just, she just be doing the most. Okay, here we go. Let me share this tab. All right, so this is her just just crawling. Yeah, yeah. We're not gonna listen to the music. Just doing the most at the VMAs. I just I don't get it. I don't get the point. It's like she just tries too hard. So now let me go ahead and go back to my page so we can finish looking at the pictures. So that was her crawling. First time at the VMAs. They knew who I was when they invited me. Girl, bye. So then Delicious says, too many outdoor shoes have been on the carpet, Buttercup. Suki says, girl, you were sleeping with Flavor Flav. You ain't scared of nothing. So this was her. Taking pictures, her with her ratchet friends backstage. I think these are other performers. It's just sad. And, you know, ain't that Dolce? Ain't that Cali? I think that's Flo Millie. And then y'all be like hyping Flo Millie. Oh, Flo Millie don't get a chance because she's dark skinned. So I'm thinking Flo Millie's some type of conscious rapper. She be talking about ratchet shit too. So, I mean, like, okay. She be talking about ratchet stuff too. I thought she was like some conscious girl. She talking about all types of craziness too. So I don't I don't get like this whole Flo Millie thing. Um, people always complaining. But anyhow, that was just all them backstage. I just thought it was tacky. So then her and Delicious got into it. 
and Delicious replied back to Suki. So let me go ahead and pull up what Delicious had to say. So Delicious says, not today, Satan. First off, let me start by saying to ask Suki Hana Goat, I apologize if my comment upset or offended you. I should have said you too fine for that flow, which is more precise way of describing what I thought when I first saw the post or even better not to comment at all. But unfortunately, I never thought my comment would be viewed as an insult. My people told me not to respond. But the new agenda is to put women at odds and have us hating each other for no good reason. I refuse to conform to that agenda. I believe if you offend someone publicly, you should be a man or woman enough to apologize and correct your mistake publicly. My comment obviously felt like judgment and that wasn't cool. I'm a fan and an advocate for women. No harm was intended, queen. I wish you blessed women, women crush Wednesday, buttercup. Okay. So that's what Delicious said. I think Delicious is pandering. Um, I don't think Delicious said anything wrong. Um, get off the floor. It's classless. You're at an award show. It's not like she's performing on the stage where she's crawling around like Madonna, you know, like a virgin. That No, you're just on the award stage floor where people's nasty ass shoes are. You're just doing too much. I feel like with her... She's being over the top with her ratchetness. Now, on Love & Hip Hop, you're crying and saying that you want to change a whole new leaf and, you know, you want to focus on something more positive. But then in the same breath, every time you get a chance to showcase yourself in a more positive light, you don't do it. Okay? Sexy Red is already ratchet enough. And I feel like when Sexy Red is ratchet, that's just who Sexy Red is. I think Suki puts on a front. Suki is smart. She's educated. A few years ago, she was crying about selling her soul. It's like her ratchetness is just over the top and it's forced. And I don't think Delicious had anything to apologize about. Um, Delicious had an opinion like everybody else. I don't think she was being disrespectful when she said it. Suki was more disrespectful to, to, to Delicious than Delicious was to Suki. But my thing is this. These are your sons, Delicious, or your daughters. All of this ratchetness came from Flavor of Love. These are the seeds that were planted all those years ago with Flavor of Love. The girls fighting, acting ratchet, you know, fighting over Flavor Flav, arguing with each other, dragging each other. And here we are. So, you know, it's sad, but I don't think Delicious has anything to really apologize about. But a lot of people are saying, like, how can you talk? when you were on Flavor of Love and this and that. And, you know, to be honest, yeah, that's, these are the the bastard children of the Flavor of Love days, you know? But I just think, like, Suki just does too much. It just, it wasn't needed. Just crawling around on the floor, twerking, and then that ratchet-ass picture backstage with all the girls. You know, it's just like, I get it, it's MTV, but can we just have a little bit of class, just a little bit? And it's not about, oh, you know, shaming black women or y'all just hate black women, you know, for having fun. No, just it's just it's just too much. There's no balance. There's no balance. It's like all the rap girls just have to be super ratchet, super over the self, over the top sexual. There's no balance because the girls who are not doing that, they, they don't go viral. They don't go viral. And she knew what she was doing. She did this for a viral moment. And the sad part is, like it or not, this is a representation of black women, and especially dark-skinned black women. This is a representation. So to me, no, I, I do feel a way. Because this is our image. And you can act like you're above that, but no, this is the image that gets shot globally to the rest of the world. It's not black women who are educated, who are making moves, who are handling their business. It's the ones crawling around on the VMAs that go viral globally. That is the global image of black women, especially dark-skinned black women. So y'all can try and so miss with the mush mouth. Oh, you know, it's, it's black women hate. No, it's not. The truth is the truth. Get up there. Be bad. Strike a fierce pose. She looked beautiful. Her dress was gorgeous. Get up there and pose, smize. You know what I'm saying? Hit them, you know, show them that you deserve to perform next year or something. Don't just come and just be ratchet. Then the other ones out there, you know, posting, you know, little gun hand gestures and stacks of money. 
It's just like, come on. Can we leave the ratchetness for the music videos and just act accordingly? Show me the picture of the K-pop girls with their ass out, bent over in that pose. It's okay, I'll wait. Show me the Latin girls who all got together at the VMAs in that pose. And again, I had the same smoke for Miley Cyrus when she got up on stage at the VMAs with them chicken cutlet cheeks and was grinding all over um, that old man, Robin Thicke, and was just doing the most. Remember, I put a teacup here. I remember me holding her accountable. So two things can be right. We can hold the white girls accountable when they do stupid shit, and we can also hold our own accountable. It's just a bit much. I'm just, I'm tired. It's a bit much. I'm just tired of like the constant whole culture, whole culture, whole culture. We're bigger than whole culture. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with anything Delicious said. I think Delicious's response was very classy and nice, but I don't think Delicious owed her an apology. If people took it offensively, fuck them. They're going to be over it tomorrow. They're always offended by something. Because again, people want the right to behave ratchet on social media and then think that it doesn't affect the youth. But then when young girls behave in the same way, y'all want to drag them. Y'all want to drag them. But who are these young girls looking up to? Everybody was mad at the 16-year-old being in Ice Spice's video. But look at the role models that she has to look up to. Again, I'm not saying that we didn't have Trina. We didn't have Little Kim. We didn't have Foxy Brown. We had all of those. But guess what? We also had Missy. We also had Rod Digger. We also had MC Light. We also had Left Eye. We had a wide range. And guess what? When Little Kim came to the award show, now granted the one award show, she had a fucking titty out, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, Diana Ross, you know, grabbed the little titty and, you know, like, what the fuck is you doing? Even Diana Ross checked her in a classy way, but she just kind of like, what the hell is this? But even with that, when they showed up at award shows, they came to slay. They posed. They, they came in like models. They took it seriously. It wasn't all this gutter shit. And that's the part. It's just, it's too much. It's, yes, Lauren Hill, Queen Latifah. There was a balance. Not everybody just wants to be ratchet. All they want to rap about is their cooch. Like, it's too much. Soleil was another one. So, yeah, you know, again, yeah, we, we've always had the ratchet folks. We've always had the ratchet music. It's nothing new. But now it's just so overly vulgar. It's just overly, it's just over the top at this point. And I just feel like Suki, she tries too hard. That's not the real her. At what point are you going to be tired of this Suki persona and just be destiny? Because you try to fight Bobby Lights on Love and Hip Hop when he was telling you like, yeah, this is not really, you need to go back to being Suki. You act like you want to change, then you get on the VMAs. But then again... This was the same girl who was crying not even two months ago about the whole thing with, you know, YK or Weirdo. And that's not to excuse him, because like I said, I already did my commentary on that. He had no business touching her. But in one breath, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, I'm scared. And the next breath, it's just over sexuality. It's too many mixed signals. And the sad part is she has people to protect her. She has security. The average young girl who's mimicking that behavior, they don't have no protection. So when they're behaving in that manner, there's nobody to protect them. So it's, it's sad. It's really sad. So now let's go ahead and um, hit on the Erica Mena situation real quick. So she finally apologized after, you know, a whole six weeks, <laughs> several weeks. Apology. Okay, here we go on TMZ. So Erica, Love and Hip Hop star Erica Mena apologizes for monkey comment. I wasn't being a racist. Erica says she's sorry for calling her reality TV show co-star a monkey, but insists there was no racism behind the insult. She says, I deeply regret my insensitive comment and want to humbly apologize to anybody I hurt, hurt or offended by my thoughtlessness. 
my choice of words was wrong and I take full responsibility for what I said. She then continues by saying, I, I am committed to listening to the voices of those affected and will work towards making amends. As women of color and a mother of two black children, I want to make it clear that my use of that word was not in any way racially driven. That said, I do understand the gravity of what I said and want to use my platform to promote inclusivity and equality. Um, and then Love and Hip Hop. This was their statement. Love and Hip Hop franchise has never shielded away from hard conversations in our community. Working hand in hand with our partners, viewers, we'll see the impact of Erica Mena's remarks play out in the final three episodes of the season. Effective immediately, she will not appear in the next season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So that was them giving that announcement. So then somebody said something in the comments and this was her response. So somebody says, did she apologize to you for bringing up your child? Erica Menes says she would never have the guts, unfortunately. So that is what Erica had to say about the situation. Now, let me say this. Last week, I already gave my commentary on this whole drama with Erica and, and Spice. Um, like I said, to me, it was a bunch of performative grandstanding by the cast of Love & Hip Hop and by Love & Hip Hop itself. I do not agree with anything Erica Menes said, um, nor do I condone it. But... In my personal opinion, the shit was fake. The whole situation was fake. Love and hip hop is fake. The people on the show are fake as hell, trying to distance themselves and act like they're better than her when they've engaged in the same bullshit, okay? First and foremost, let's keep this real because I saw a lot of people saying, oh, it was racist. You know, if you say something at work, you get fired, this and that. Okay, that's fine. If Erica would have said something about the Jewish community, let's keep this real. Do you think that Love and Hip Hop would have ran it as promo for months? We found out about this table flipping incident back in April. They ran promo and used that clip over and over again of her flipping the table and everything else. Everybody knew that there were racial things said. And they still used it for promo. Had Erica said anything about the Jewish community, they would have issued a statement that day that she was fired. They would have never used it for promo. It wouldn't have fucking aired. And that's what I don't respect. I don't like hollow gestures. I don't like fake grandstanding. And I don't like performative bullshit. And that's what I see with this whole Erica Mena situation. It's nothing but grandstanding and performative nonsense, okay? On Discord, I had posted this other, I'm gonna bring you on the Discord real quick. I had posted this over the week and we had a really good conversation. Let me share my tab. Let me go up here. Okay. So this is what I, what, I wrote, what I wrote on Discord. I said, if I had the time, I would create a two-hour compilation of the hypocrisy of the Love & Hip Hop franchise. They are in no position to now act moral after pushing this type of stereotypical drama for years. Why haven't all these folks been fired for saying monkey, nappy-headed, making fun of other black women, continually fighting? Again, this isn't in defense of Erica's trash behavior. It's me simply showing the hypocrisy. It's funny how Rashida and Kirk want to play innocent and moral now, but she was screaming about nappy hair a few seasons ago. Trina drugged somebody's innocent kids for the filth, and Suki caught the girl a swamp monkey as well. This entire franchise is problematic as fuck. And then I posted a lot of the clips. I'm not going to play it all in full. Yeah, and that's what? Yeah, let me have my Hold on. She caught her Frantic nappy hair. Insecure ass bitch. Why? Yeah, let me have my Frantic insecure nappy ass hair. You bipolar. Do what you do. Do something with your nappy ass hair. You bipolar. Get the frantic insecure. So y'all heard that with your nappy ass hair. I want to play the whole thing. Okay. And then 
Oh yeah, K. Oh yeah, we was laughing about K. Michelle and uh, Tamar. Look at you. You look a mess. No, she don't. Dirty ass kiss. What you talking about, hoe? Don't let it. Okay. Get the out. You not an artist. You a come. You me that's ninety years old. So take care of your mother. Dirty ass kiss. What you talking about, hoe? Don't let this lace wig and these heels fool you. I am from Fifteenth Avenue. Don't play with me. Well, down. Shut the Trick and Trina are the king and queen crabs of Miami. Girl, hold up. Hold up. Okay. Slop. Wait, this is Smokey. Okay. Okay. So y'all heard Suki call her a swamp monkey. Trina's dragging this woman's kids. Um, there were other videos too people were posting in here. Let me see. What was this? Oh yeah, when she oh not that one. What was this? There was another one. This was uh Bambi and Erica. So you see, she caught her Wesley Snipes insinuating by her dark skin, caught her nappy headed. Um, so yeah. And there are other clips, and then the girl, the one that was doing the thing with um Tamar that was sitting there like, oh, I would have, you know, punched her in her mouth and she's comfortable saying that because she's racist. I went back and watched some of her clips because she was on Love and Hip Hop and she was playing into the whole Haitian versus Dominican thing with Amara and La Negra. She was throwing bottles. I'm like, you were literally throwing a, a bottle, a liquor bottle. You know, so like I said, all of these folks are full of crap. Um, I could care less about her apology. I don't think it's genuine. I think she's just apologizing because she got fired from literally everything that she does, you know, and so she's trying to clean up everything. But I also, like I said, I'm always going to point out the hypocrisy. And a lot of these people said a lot of really foul things during the years on this show. Oh, shit. Money bag Mo's in the building. All I see is a bunch of money bags. Money bag Mo, Monique Lowell. Thank you so much, sis. She just came through and dropped $299.99. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. Always coming through, showing the love. Always showing love. I really, really appreciate it. Um, somebody said Jesse called Amarla Negra's mother barbaric. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They've all said very problematic stuff. So I'm not praising this. Loving hip hop. They have no heroes to me. And I really don't even watch this show anymore. I've only watched it this season because I was in Atlanta when the whole table incident played out. So I wanted to watch what happened. But I've missed several of the new seasons just because it just got so trashy. All it was was them fighting and arguing and going back and forth. So I find the whole thing just performative. Very, very performative. Um, so let me see here. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about Brother Polite. Now that we're near the end of the show, man, Moneybag Mo be coming through. I really, really appreciate it. I really do. Um, so for y'all who don't know who Brother Polite is, Brother Polite is a dusty hotep. Um, and I used to watch him. I've, I've, he's one of the ones I watched from day one. I remember him being on Sonetta TV. You know, that's when I used to like kind of follow some of the people in the conscious community, you know, just trying to learn more about consciousness and stuff like that. And so that is where he was introduced to me. And he seemed very articulate. He had these three wives. He was pushing polygamy and all that stuff. And everything seemed very, very interesting and innocent initially when they first came on the scene. He said he had written like 25 books. He spoke all these languages, you know, um, and he just seemed very, very interesting. So then about two years ago, news broke because he had been changing over the years. I've noticed a big change in him. When he first came out, he was always wearing, you know, the the, hus the, the dusty hotep garb. You know, he's dressed in these, you know, flea market dashikis. All the wives had afros, um, you know, they, I don't know. They were just on their hotep shit, right? Then as they got more fame, he was another one scamming, selling courses and books and repairing credit. And he had like some type of penny stock scheme he was doing for a while. And he had a bunch of celebrities investing in him. He was running with like um, Metaworld Police, 
um, Floyd Mayweather. And I noticed as they were getting more of the scamming money, his persona was changing. And that's when I checked the fuck out. Um, he started wearing Versace shirts. I said, well, damn. Not even five years ago, everybody was dressed in, you know, flea market gear. Now, you know, he's dripped down and head to toe in Versace and Marc Jacob, you know, Dolce & Gabbana. The wives went from wearing afros to, you know, hair weaves. The one wife, I think she got her body done. They all look like they got their bodies done. Um, teeth fixed. Um, they went from, you know, always being covered up, classy, demure. The wife just looks like a fucking hood rat now. The shortest dress, ass always out, titties always out. I'm like, what is conscious about this? It's polite and his three sluts. They don't even come off like wives anymore. She's in six inch heels. She's no different than the same women that he tries to preach about. You want to talk about these girls on Instagram and how the black woman needs to do this and the black woman needs to do that. Look at the new hood rats on your arms that you call wives. Okay. So then it came out two years ago that he basically, because, you know, Mr. Polygamy was helping himself. He went from the original wives, then he was with a white woman. He was with some chick that was in the middle of her living room pole dancing with her baby and shit. Um, so he just started dating all these women. He went from three wives to like literally 25 wives or some shit. Every time I turned around, there was a new wife. So one of his new wives that, you know, bootleg Malachi York was messing with, she had a 14-year-old daughter. And supposedly the 14 year old daughter, he wanted to meet up with her at the hotel and they had sex. From what the reports were saying, he was denying it, but they found his semen in her panties. And I don't care how you slice it. There's no way that a man's semen would end up in little girl's panties. That, 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 so for people to even defend him for almost two years is insane to me. But I just sat back and sipped tea. I didn't do any polite videos. So I'm going to just fall back, sip tea, and watch how this shit plays out. So I'm going to take y'all back down memory lane. I got a few clips I want to play for y'all here. So this was the initial arrest here of Dusty Polite. And he looks horrible without that head scarf on or whatever the hell. Hat. This was the initial story. Junior, also known as Brother Polite, to his more than 300,000 Instagram followers. Miami Beach police arrested Noack this week for alleged sexual battery of a 14-year-old girl in a hotel room in February. Police say the alleged victim was the daughter of a woman he was romantically linked to. Once the evidence is produced, um, that he is going to be exonerated. Uh, so yeah, not guilty, nothing else. According to the police report, Noack, a motivational speaker and author who lives in L.A., asked the woman if he could take her daughter to an after party at a club in Miami. The report states Noack took the teen to his hotel after seeing that the club was closed. Police say the suspect gave the teen alcohol and started dancing and touching the teen inappropriately, groping her breasts in her thighs and buttocks. It goes on to say Noack trying to force the teen to perform oral sex on him. The teen allegedly passed out and woke up to Noack trying to make her throw up. This is the mugshot of 37-year-old Michael Noack Jr., also known as Brother Polite. All right. So let me come back on the screen here. So that's the initial story of uh, Brother Polite. I got several clips here. So this is the part about the stuff being found out in her panties. Damn shame. Uh, that's why, Your Honor, okay, right. asked the defendant to be present. I also am very concerned that the defendant has been essentially terrorizing the victim. I mean, the victim's 14 years old, and um, there's since, been a lot since, of... Since, being, since the arrest? Since the arrest, Judge. She's been very communicative on uh he's been very vocal on social media on uh there's been videos of the victim drugged by this defendant leaked online um your honor on this case we do have dna showing that the defendant's sperm was on the victim's book the the can you unmute yourself and break your right hand do you feel the testimony about the given? So this was like 
um, during COVID. So that's why they had this, um, you know, he wasn't in the courtroom. But yeah, he was using his followers to harass the girl and the mother. He was going live all the time, denying the allegations, basically harassing the victim. But you heard them say that they found his semen in her on her clothing. Truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay, so you can put your arm down. Can you tell me your full name and your date of birth? Michael Eugene Notes Jr. Born August. On the case yet? Uh, that's why you're on. Lessons in abundance. So now this is his dusty ass. Notice he's wearing Dior, a Dior headscarf to hide that faux head. Um, he threatened people when people were like questioning him, dragging him. He said he was going to sue everybody who spoke up against him because he was innocent. The mother and the daughter and the prosecution dropped every single sexual charge. So you say it again. The mother. The daughter, my accusers, in addition to the state, the prosecution, all agree they need to drop all of the sexual charges. So yeah, it's a victory, but it's bittersweet. It's a victory because I was facing life. No parole, no probation. Now you may say, how could this be possible if a minor was so-called molested and it was DNA evidence? And people say DNA don't lie. And I always said, people do. Well, let's do this. The serologist, the, the expert that so-called found six semen stains, blessings in abundance. The All right. I'm going to show y'all some more clips here. Bear with me. So the night that this dust bucket was supposed to go to court... He threw a big party. This is how much of a just a, a, a narcissist he is. We're going to go to his page. So he threw a, a big party, basically proclaiming his innocence in the club. I don't want to play too much of the music. Those charges dropped. This was a day before he got locked up. Bottles, I don't see nothing here healthy. I don't see no spring water, just liquor, Moet, a lot of white people. Where, where's all the hoteps? Where, where are the blacks? Where, where are the black folks? He got on Fendi. This dude is a clown. Drip, where's the dashikis? He's a clown. But black women, right? Black women need to care of themselves. Look at them. Assaulting somebody. That's, I think it's probably one of his chicken head wives. Oh, no. Looks like a spicy Latina. Dude is trash. But this is who folks look up to. So let me explain this real quick. Let me come back on the screen. The reason why the charges were dropped is because the mother did not want to put her child through, you know, going through a whole court case having her 14-year-old daughter exposed to the world, especially being that they have been trolling this family, sending them death threats. So she wanted to meet him in the middle where he would still be charged with something and they were willing to drop the sexual um, charges. But obviously he was still found guilty. Even if they dropped that, they only dropped it because they were doing him a favor. He'd have to plead and, and take the seven years, which he did. But my thing is, if you're innocent, why did you not take it to trial? Because you knew had they taken it to trial, they would have peeled back that the onions and all of your, everything would have been exposed. Not just the sexual abuse of this child, but everything. They're scamming, they're scheming, all the nonsense that he's done over the years. His character is in the toilet. And that is why he didn't want to take it to trial. Typical Hotep Dusty who came up off the community, him and his wives. And look how much his lifestyle has changed in less than five years. Um, of being on social media once the money started rolling in. You notice there weren't a bunch of black hotep conscious community people around him. They weren't bringing out bottles of spring water and alkaline water. They were bringing out liquor. It's funny that when these dusty hoteps are broke, 
Everything is about making your own, you know, milk. Oh, all you need is a few almond seeds. Just take almond nuts, put it in a cheesecloth, add spring water and squeeze it in the cheesecloth and you have almond milk. It's funny when you're broke, that's good enough for them. But once these Dusties start getting some fame and money, now we pop in Moet bottles and, and, and Hennessy. What happened to the almond milk, Brother Polite? What happened to the cheesecloth? What happened to all the herbs and, and the natural remedies? What happened to the Maonetcha and all the shit that you were talking about and the black woman is God, but you're slapping the spicy Latina on the ass? Dude is a clown. He's a clown. And the fact that people defended him is insane. So we're going to go back and look at some more of his Instagram page before the dusty wives start trying to delete videos. This is him now. Ball main. Ball main. Down. Head to toe. Armani Dubai Hotel. He's no longer staying. Now, I'm not saying he needs to be in the, in the projects and be a poor righteous teacher, but look at him. TMT. Just arrogant. Talk to me nice. All this drip, we gonna need it. On the people's money. Now he's worrying about his body and working out and taking selfies, showing his chest. When he was broken and just a string bean, he never took any selfies. We didn't see what his pecs looked like. Here goes one of his little uh, hood rat wise. Drunk. Can barely walk. Ain't her name Aminette or something like that? Where, where is the alkaline water, sis? Where's the almond milk and cheese cloths? She looks like a, a, a typical stripper, like an IG, Instagram thought. The same ones that they used to talk about. Maria, only oh yeah, he's trying to be a rapper too. Let's not forget that he started his own little rap career. Is he rapping about consciousness? Let's, let, let's take a listen. Christopher, we acknowledge his Wallace. No, he's not. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> Again, spicy Latina, where's your wives? These are his daughters. That's his oldest. Imagine if somebody did to his daughter what he did to that woman's daughter. Got you. Let's do it. Just trash. You got the nerve to have two daughters. All right. And this daughter is the same age as the girl. You did it in. She looked just like him, too. Hey, pull up on me at Ben, dog. He could never deny her, child. Look at him. This is this is the conscious, the conscious man. What does this have to do with, you know what I'm saying, with consciousness? Black women need to carry themselves well, but this is what he posts. Okay. Here he is. Rolls Royce, Balmain. This is the conscious guy that people followed for years and defended. Damn shame. Ooh, my screen is freezing. Hold on. I'm clocking. Can y'all still? Am I frozen? Ooh. Did I freeze? Can y'all hear me? Am I still here? I don't know what's going on. I think my whole thing froze. Okay, y'all can hear me? 
Everybody says I'm frozen. Somebody just texted me so they can hear me. I don't know. Maybe YouTube froze my stream. Okay. I don't know what's going on. It says I have an excellent connection. Everything just froze. This is crazy. The second I start talking about this pedo, everything just froze. Well, I could come back. Oh, y'all can still hear me? I'm it's still frozen on my end. I I could but I don't want to do it if y'all can't hear me. Hold on. Hold up. Let me do a force quick. Oh, am I back? Hold on. Okay. Okay. I think it's bringing me back. All right. Can y'all see and hear me? That was so weird. Everybody's texting me and blowing my phone up. I don't know what's going on. We got like 10,000 people in here. Okay, I want to I want to finish dragging Brother Polite. Can y'all see? Okay, we're back. Okay, good. All right. Thank y'all. I don't know why I was like, it's like freezing and clocking. It's doing it again. Damn. Okay, ignore. Guess I've been on here too long. I don't know. It's like it did it and now it's freezing up again. Am I back again? Nope. And I don't want to end the stream. Okay. Looks like it's back again. I don't know what's going on. Okay, let me hide this comment. Okay, can y'all hear me? Yeah, it keeps freezing. I don't know what else to do. It keeps freezing. I don't want to end the stream, but like it just keeps freezing up for some reason. I don't know what else to do. Let me um hmm. Let's see here. Okay. Let me I just close one of the tabs. Hold on.
Okay. Yeah, I, I think there's something going on. It just keeps, it keeps freezing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's if the dusty hoteps are attacking me. I think I'm back in here now. I don't know, child. Damn. I had to like shut down all the pages. So all my notes that I just had. Oh, damn it. Let me see if I can find. Hold on. I got it. Because I had like other stuff I wanted to show y'all. Let me go on my history. Because I had a video of <laughs> Omar Johnson. He had an opinion about Polite. Damn. Well, at least I'm not frozen now. That just sucks. I just hate like when I have everything organized. Okay, let me see. I can see one of the videos. Cause I wanted y'all to hear. I wanted y'all to hear the mother too. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. I can't control it. I don't know if the the dusty hoteps are attacking me. They're mad. Okay. I'll try and come back and read some of the super chats too. But let me let me try and get through this real quick. Damn, I had them organized. Uh, I might have to click around. Damn. All right. Well, at least let's watch what Umar has to say. A very popular brother from the conscious community. We were not friends. We were not allies. We were not associates. I really didn't care for the man. According to the report <laughs> that I'm receiving, this brother pled guilty to child molestation abuse, otherwise known as pedophilia. And the mother and the daughter and the prosecution dropped every single sexual charge many months later you are going to be sentenced to seven years in state prison to be followed by 10 years of reporting probation you will also participate in and successfully complete a mentally disordered sex offender treatment program allegedly he took advantage of this 14 did y'all peep that you're going to be forced once you get off probation you're going to get 10 years of probation on top of the seven years and forced to take a class on sexual abuse and mental disorders. So he can, you know, cheer that these sexual, you know, allegations got dropped, but why would they have him taking a class about sexual abuse? That's cause he cut a deal with his fake Fendi wearing ass. 14 year old girl who was the child of the queen he was dating allegedly i don't follow him but you know what's sad if this brother is in fact guilty of the charges that were laid upon him and it appears that he is especially if there's six semen stains somebody said six semen stains were found on that 14 year old child six semen stains i don't know he will be able to reinvent himself you know why because you have had men who have done similar things who gave birth to some of our largest black movements and those movements are still running strong those men are still considered great black leaders although they molested underage black girls so unfortunately in this black america he will a very popular brother from the conscious community we were okay. not let me see if I can find the mother. Gosh. Yeah, this dude is sick. He is literally like the living embodiment of Dr. York. And then on top of that, he was like trying to cuss folks out. I'm talking, he's been cussing folks out on the internet for like a good six months now. Anybody who said anything about him, he was getting them flags, said he was gonna sue people. Damn lunatic. Last thing I'm going to address quickly. very quickly. This means that people are lying. If I if I was lying, you would be able to find something that contradicts what I'm saying. I made no plea. And there is no plea for child molestation on my behalf. I never plead to no child molestation, and I never made a plea in the first place. These are lies. Five minutes later. Okay, so Mr. Noah, <laughs> uh, the terms of the okay. plea agreement are as what the prosecutor just stated, that you were going to be entering a plea of guilty to the two counts of aggravated child abuse and one count of deliberate uh, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. 
You will be adjudicated guilty, which is a criminal conviction on your record. Do you also understand, sir, that by entering into this plea that it may subject you to involuntary civil commitment proceedings set forth in Florida statutes 394.910 through 394.931? Do you understand everything that I've said thus far? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to also advise you, sir, that you are going to be sentenced to seven years in state prison to be followed by 10 years of reporting probation. In addition to any of these special conditions of probation, you will also participate in and successfully complete a mentally disordered sex offender treatment program. These are lies. I'm glad they are roasting his ass on TikTok. Good job, TikTok. Now, this is the, the girl's mother. So we're going to listen to what she has to say. Let her identity remain um, anonymous. So for that reason, she will not be stating her name, but she will be making a statement uh, regarding the where would it? Where would it, it be? It should say victim, and then in parentheses, no act. Nope, sorry. You see a when it's uh, a victim, nope. Okay, yes, one second. All right, you may unmute, ma'am. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. All right, so what I'd like you to do um, is, well, you don't want to give your name. So at this point, just go ahead and you can give us a an impact statement. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Michael Nowak, this is the first time I have spoken publicly about what you've done to my daughter and I. I have gracefully remained silent the last two and a half years. Two and a half years of pain, shock, disbelief, PTSD, constant nightmares, and daily triggers, trying to help my daughter heal when I'm not even healed myself. What you have done to my daughter myself and my entire family is inexcusable you hurt us all you made me believe that you were such a great man and you could do no wrong you made me fully trust you and for that my daughter trusted you too but the truth is you're a monster a demon the very first time that I allowed you to be alone with my daughter, the very first time and you couldn't even help yourself, you told me you was going to be right back. We were going downstairs. We were going to grab food and take vacation pictures. You told me that you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with her about loving and respecting me as a great mother that I was in Ann. I actually believed you. I believed that you were going to bring her right back. I thought you were going to have this trusting conversation with her that you promised me. Her and I both trusted you. For a grown man to violate a child who trusted him, you should be ashamed of yourself. All right. Let me... I'm back on the screen here. Give me just a second. I have a few things to say. Um, okay. So you guys just heard what the mother had to say. And I, I have to keep it real. Like I always tell you guys, it is your job as a parent to protect your child. Okay. But unfortunately, you have a lot of mothers, a lot of women out here who once they see somebody who's famous, who has proximity to fame, who has money, all common sense gets thrown out the window. And this is not me victim blaming, this is me keeping it real. There's nothing that a man that I'm starting a relationship with, this is not, it's not like she's been dating Polite for years. They had just started dating. There's nothing that he needs to talk with my 14 year old minor daughter about by himself, period. There's no reason that at any point in time he should have been left with your daughter who is not his child by herself. They have nothing to talk about. He doesn't need to teach my daughter about love, the Mayanetcha, none of that shit. 
Because a lot of these men, unfortunately, money and power corrupt some people where they don't know what to do with that. And then they turn into sexual deviants because of the power bestowed on them by the people. So I'm not blaming her. We have to be smarter and we have to move smarter as mothers, especially single mothers. And this goes for, I don't care if you have a boy or a girl, because a lot of these dudes are out here, you know what I'm saying, going after young boys too. A lot of sons are getting molested and raped too by who the mother chooses to bring home. So this is just insane to me. This dude is always giving creepy pedo vibes. Now, let me get back on his wife, the main wife. She's been there from day one. I get grooming vibes from her. Now, there's a video that Jesse Lee Peterson did. He interviewed them years ago, and it's going viral again on social media. So let me pull that up. Where Polite is talking... Now, this is two of his wives. The one wife, the other one who's had the big afro who had one of his babies, I don't know what happened to her. I haven't seen her in years. But we're going to listen to what the what the young wife says. Hold on real quick. She's going to kind of explain how she met Polite and Aminette. Now, when you look at them, you notice they have the afro. You know, he's dressed decent. Yeah, she's kind of whatever dressed. But they're a lot more demure. This is when she was starting her little hoe phase. Before she was wearing like dashikis and shit like polite. So you see with the heels and the see-through top and all that stuff. But she still had the afro. They both did. But listen to this young girl. This is his third wife. No, I think she's the second wife. I don't know what happened to the other one with the big afros and the big titties. I don't know what happened to her. I ain't seen her in a while. My first, my first thought was yeah. natural because That's right. um, when I started coming, I was really young. So I actually was. How old were you in the um, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. And so. Did you hear her? When she used to come around them, she was 16, 17. Look at his groomer wife. Look how her eyes dart. Look how her eyes dart from side to side like a damn Chesser cat. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. See that? Store. You see and her eyes? So I Don't watch it again. Them to the, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. How old were you at the time? I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. Look, they and both nervous. So I seen them she two done together. She said too much. I was just like really happy for them. She was um, pregnant and she looked gorgeous. Like she just was just dark African looking queen <laughs> with her afro, you know, and I was just like, wow, you know, so that was the first thought I had. I was just like, does she know, you know? But yeah, that's pretty much the first thought. And then so he says, yes, she knows. And you say, okay, let's talk, the three of you, or did you just bring her home? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what we did, we all talked. I, of course, got permission from my wife, Aminette, to engage her and present the idea to her. And then we all eventually talked after I spoke to her and we had a meeting. Are you guys like legally married or you just say wife? Oh, oh of course, bigamy is against the law, mm -hmm. but I have contracts with each of my wives. With the wife, okay. Were you surprised when your wife said yes to a second wife? Um, no, I wasn't surprised. What I would say is I would be surprised some years prior. Right. Because that definitely wouldn't have been her disposition. So you, you meet her, and then what happened in your mind? You're like, this is a good one to be with? Well, actually, yes, because she, like they mentioned, she has been coming around to the bookstore for years before right. we even um, uh, consider her as a co-wife. So uh, She said for years. So if, she, if the young girl is saying she met them around 16, 17, they've been watching her for years, probably since she was 12, 13, 14. Okay. And you just see how much different she looked back then compared to how she looks now. So I don't want to play all this. Y'all can go look for it. Um, let me come back on the screen. There was another video I wanted to play. Let me see if I can find it because my whole screen just disappeared. So let me see if I can. Do, 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 do. Ah, this video. We're going to watch this real quick. Now, remember, that was a young girl that we just saw, right? So we're going to watch 
her now, years later. For me? Let me pause this. Now, this is the same young girl. Remember, I told you when they first came on the scene, they all had afros and dusty flea, flea market dashikis. This is her now. She got a, you know, wig, lace front, sexy top. Learning something new is like, it gives me a high. I was attracted to him because of the information that he could spit. Okay. Now, us as females, like, I want an intelligent man who has dreams. Showing off his Dolce & Gabbana. Who knows himself and wants more for and wants more for himself, his children, and his people. And talk. that's who he is. That's okay. Who do you really think? Talk to me nice. Listen, do you really think black females in America would conform? Would, would conf right. To some, do you really some old think she can't even strum two sentences together without stuttering, stumbling. She's a brainwashed idiot, and it's not her fault. Oh, stuff like come to on, like, man. No, well, no, nah, it must be real. Hey, no, let's get up out of here, baby. I yeah, got you. I'm he's here. He's different. I'm telling you, like, he's different from me. All right. At this point, I think he's pimping them all out. The the wives, I think they're just having you know sex with random celebrities for clout and everything else. I mean, the fact that she slipped up and said she was underage when she met them, and I'm Annette, the head wife said that they've been watching her for years, but she said she met y'all at 16, 17, so how long is years? So I, I wouldn't be surprised that the creepy wife of his is also a groomer and was helping to facilitate different things because, again, she's gotten very accustomed to the lifestyle that he's been able to provide her, you know, via scamming and scheming and all that shit. So she don't want to lose that lifestyle. So at that point, she's willing to let him do whatever. She's willing to let him, you know, smash whoever, bring whoever into the bedroom because she wants to maintain that lifestyle. I watch these people from day one. So this is not me just being judgmental. No, I remember when they first came out on the scene. They were very smart, articulate. You know, she claimed she wrote books and she was running businesses and they were teaching women how to cook. And they were really trying to show young people that polygamy was okay. But now, fast forward, all that was just brainwashing technique. That's why when I see a lot of these dusty hoteps sit here and talk about, oh, polygamy, polygyny, whatever the hell they want to call it, just say you want to fuck a bunch of females and get the fuck out my face. Stop trying to run game and trying to make it sound sexy. And, oh, in the Bible it says, yeah, in the Bible. We're not living in Bible days. It's funny that these same men, they hate modern women and want modern women are whores and they don't know how to carry themselves. But then they also want the same modern women benefits. They want women who are dumb, who are willing to put up with anything. You know what I'm saying? They want you to get into these polygamous relationships, polygynous, whatever the hell they call it, relationships. So that way they can fuck and suck and get sucked and do all this. But let you want to have a side king. Let you want to have some peen on the side. It's an issue. So it's very funny. The whole thing is just misogynistic. It's just bullshit. And it's sad that so many young girls fall for this. And I get why young girls fall for it because they feel like, you know, you know, they can have somebody take care of them. It's the best of both worlds. They can be sister wives, but it never happens that way. Somebody eventually gets jealous that somebody's getting more attention. This is just about sex. It's not about building a family. It's simply about sex and stroking these dusty dudes' egos. Because a real man doesn't need to sit here and run game and have multiple women. Because if you're that secure and you're all that, then why can't she have another man on the side? And their whole thing is, well, it's different. I don't want my wife, you know what I'm saying, taking different peen. But it's okay for you to stick your dusty peen in several different coochies. Make it make sense. You're still creating soul ties. So young girls, please learn from this and stop letting these dusty hoteps, especially the ones from the East Coast, run game on you and act like you know their, their sect is the next thing, the best thing since sliced bread. It's really sad what has happened to Polite. This entire family, this entire situation has been nothing but a circus. But like they always says, you know what I'm saying? The same ones you see on your way up will be the same ones that you see on your way down. And he needed to be humbled. He got very arrogant over the years. Like I said, he can't even have a conversation with that wife 
without showing that he's wearing some Dolce and Gabbana shoes. This was a man that used to walk around in Jesus sandals preaching to people about making almond milk and the Marnetcha and the black woman is God and all this shit that he used to talk. And now he has to let you know that he's wearing the white man's designer shoes. He's wearing the white man's Versace, the white man's Fendi. You know, the same white devil that you used to preach against years ago. These guys are full of shit. They say all this to build a fan base. And then once they get money, they act like the same rappers that they used to diss. The, 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 the wives are dressing like the same Instagram thoughts that they used to talk about. We're in a polygamous marriage, but we carry ourselves with respect. And this is my husband and my king. And it's about being modest. What is modest about Aminette now? I see her titties more than I see mine. She looks like a pass around. And this was a woman who used to carry herself with respect when she first came online. But again, money does not change people. And I'm tired of people saying that money changed him. No. Money just exacerbates who you always were. This man was always a pervert. He was always a bootleg Dr. York. He was always a dusty Hotep R. Kelly. The money just gave him more options. Now, instead of picking on and, and, and you know, picking and being a wolf in sheep's clothing in the hood, now he's able to do it in Dubai. He's able to do it in Mexico. He's able to travel and, and be in LA and Beverly Hills running the same dusty ass game. And I wouldn't be surprised if more victims come out against him. But again, this is why I also say as women and as mothers, you have to be smart. Stop bringing your children around people because you're busy trying to chase the bag. Because you want proximity to fame. If Brother Polite was Dusty Polite on the block and he didn't have the money and the fame that he accumulated over the past 5 to 10 years, that mother wouldn't have checked for him. It's funny that everybody who gets around him now, all these females, they're all willing to be in a polygamous relationship. They're willing to be the side chick just because of his proximity to fame, just because he has money. Some of y'all are willing to sell y'all's daughters out because there's no way in hell a guy that I'm dating is going to be left in a hotel room, in any room alone with my daughter. It's insane. But I will give her props for at least believing her daughter and pressing charges and going through with it because many of these idiot women would have blamed the daughter because they wanted to keep up the lifestyle. It would have been the daughter's fault because the mother wants to be next to Polite. So at least she did do her due diligence as a mother and press charges on Polite and take it all the way as far as she could. But I get her not wanting to traumatize her daughter more by exposing the daughter, exposing the daughter's name and everything else. At the end of the day, y'all can sit here with this dusty mush mouth bullshit. At the end of the day, there's no reason for a grown man semen to be anywhere near a young girl. I don't care if it was six semen spots or if he come to river. There's no reason where it should have been anywhere near a 14 year old, especially when he's a father to not one but two girls. So I don't feel bad for pro-life, good riddance. And again, if he did nothing wrong sexually, why after when he gets out, he has to go to all this sexual counseling? Y'all heard what the judge said, clear as day. They did him a favor by dropping the sexual assault charges so it's not tied to him. But that didn't mean that he's not guilty. He thought he was the living embodiment of Dr. York. And now he's doing time like Dr. York, but unfortunately he only got seven years instead of life in prison. But Dr. York was raping boys and girls. And there was even an old video of Polite almost shaming a Dr. York victim, a young black man. He was shaming him. Even saying it doesn't matter if he, you know, molested, you know, tons of girls or boys. It's about the message. What kind of shit is that? No, it's not about the message. Not when the messenger is corrupt. Fuck the message. If you're out here messing with babies. So I, I'm just, I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked because he's gotten so arrogant and full of himself over the years. I've just sat back and watched. But it's really sad, you know what I'm saying, the stuff that he's done. It just does not make any sense. You have grown women throwing their fucking, you know, panties at you. 
just because he's running around with Metal World Peace and all these celebrities and he has all this money, he's in the club. Why are you not sitting here messing with these grown women? Because it's not about that. It's about power. He literally was taking on the spirit of Dr. York. So he's a sicko and he's where he should be. And I feel no ways whatsoever. Good riddance. Good riddance. If y'all are liking this stream, please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Somebody said, talk about Danny Masterson. We could talk about him too, but what does that mean? Y'all always want to bring up a, a random white person. One thing about this channel, I don't just call out black people or black men. Okay, so y'all can bring up Danny. We posted videos about Danny. Danny's another loser who got 30 years in prison, rightfully so. And I think because of everything that Danny Masterson has done, this is probably going to be the final nail in Scientology's coffin. Because Scientology has covered up a lot of bullshit over the years. And they also need to be held accountable. But right now, we're not talking about Danny. We're talking about Polite. Y'all do the same thing anytime people bring up R. Kelly. What about Steven Tyler? What about Elvis? No, what about Polite? What about R. Kelly? We're talking about them right now. I don't talked about all these white men before. Right now, we're talking about this Dusty Hotep. Who scammed the people. Who gained the trust of the people. And then just went crazy. He's a shell of the person he was when he first came out. I used to enjoy it. I used to watch him all the time. I enjoyed the things that he said. I learned a lot from him in those early, in those early days. Him teaching folks how to make almond milk. Learned that from him. Now he's in the club popping bottles. And he's not even around his own black people. It's a shame. It's sad how... Money and fame and just a little bit of notoriety go to these people's heads. And it's not just polite. a lot of people on social media. They allow just a little bit of fame. That's why I told y'all before in my stream about Fresh and Fit. You can always tell the motherfuckers out who never had shit. They were never popular. People didn't really like them. They weren't cute. You know what I'm saying? This goes for the guys and the girls. You can tell the ones who just, they were, they were never that guy or girl. Because as soon as they got a little bit of internet fame, it went straight to their head. You couldn't tell them shit. If people liked you and rock with you, if you really had genuine friends, this internet thing is not going to change you that much. It's not that damn serious. Because you're going to still have real people around you to check you and to keep you humble and to let you know when you did wrong. But that's the problem. People want a bunch of yes men around them. People to stroke their ego and tickle their twat. And make them feel good. And then when they get into these situations, now they want the people to come and rally around them and support them. Nah, don't ask for our support. Go ask for all them white people to support you. Go ask Dolce & Gabbana and Versace to support you. I checked out about five years ago. Once I seen, once he moved to LA and he started renting Rolls Royces and mansions and trying to keep up this weird facade and then the wives were co-signing it, I was done. I checked out. And I ain't watched him since. So brother Pedo Light can kick rocks. I don't feel bad for him. And I think that damn lady, Aminette, should be investigated too. I wouldn't be surprised if she was grooming girls for him. Remember R. Kelly, the person who was fishing for girls for R. Kelly was London on the track's mom. But y'all's not ready for that conversation. She was going to the mall and getting girls and grooming them and preparing them for R. Kelly. A lot of times these pedos, don't, they don't work alone because he knows if he goes out and tries to get these girls, it's going to cause a lot of attention. But if he can send the wives to bring down their guard, why not? They want to keep their lifestyle. They don't care. I don't trust none of them. I don't trust none of them. I think they're all trash. So let me go ahead and read these last few super chats. I've been on here for two hours. I'm going to get ready to go. Um, we covered everything. So let me see here. Um, hold on. I got a lot of super chats. I can't read them all, and I'm sorry. Um, we did the Danish now. Wavy Tay, what's up, Wavy Tay? He sent forty nine ninety nine. Says, "Hey, Auntie, this is your favorite show, uh, soldier, uh, reporting for duty. What are your thoughts on the flood that killed over?" 
5,000 people in Libya a week after the Moroccan earthquake that killed over 700 people. Uh, they also did Mary wrong and Vlad is still a Bia. Thank you so much, Wavy Tay. I think it's really sad, um, especially what happened with the flooding, with the earthquakes. I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's weather manipulation or what is going on, if it's harp. But I definitely think that we are living in last days. You know, we had the Maui fires, you know, and I'm thinking a lot of these places that do have a lot of natural resources, they're being attacked right now. Because Morocco also has like minerals and different resources as well. So it's very interesting that they got hit with the earthquake that has not been that big in 128 years. So I definitely find it very, very suspicious. But thank you for coming through. I appreciate you. And thank you for your service as well. Um, let's see here. Young Kobe sent $20. Says, T, did you see the Mexican government reveal two alien corpses? Why not? What are they trying to distract us from? No, I didn't. What? The Mexican government revealed two alien corpses. Let me pull this up on YouTube real quick. I didn't even know about this. This must have happened while I was on live. All of a sudden, why are they so into aliens all of a sudden? Oh, my gosh. Three hours ago. Let's watch this together, y'all. Let me share this. Hold on. We're going to watch this together. I didn't even know about this. Today, Mexico's Congress heard testimony on UFOs and the prospect of alien life. And that hearing started with what was a huge surprise. <laughs> Take a look. Self-described UFOologist J.D. Mousen brought two caskets of, sor of a sort mm. into the congressional chambers and revealed what was inside what he claimed to be the small stuffed bodies of extraterrestrials. The corpses did look a little bit like aliens, big head, little body, three fingers. Mousen said they were found in Peru back in 2017. They're estimated to be 1,000 years old. Before you get too excited on this, Mousen has a history of making fantastic claims that have later been proven false. No. <laughs> fantastic. I'm not buying it. Let me get the hell off my screen. I'm not buying it. That shit looks like a damn E.T. reject. They're trying to just distract us from stuff. I'm not buying any of this alien talk all of a sudden. We've been talking about aliens since the 90s. All of a sudden now, alien, alien, alien. No, I'm more worried about Project Blue Beam. I'm more worried about what they're going to be doing with them damn holograms. I'm not buying this. That's, that looks like an E.T. reject. I could have made that in my damn basement. He's sitting with that ashy-ass alien. Just making up shit. I'm not buying it. But thank you, young Kobe. Appreciate you. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Kiki says, I follow Dana Chanel. She tried to sell me life insurance, beauty products, and supplements. Thankfully, I trust. I have trust issues. Well, thank goodness you do. I mean, somebody who's doing all that, that's insane. How, do you, how are you selling life insurance, beauty products, and supplements? Girl, bye. Looks like the money's running low. So now she's just, she's just selling everything, trying to make it stick. Uh, let's see here. Jersey Girl Sam 5 says, Rich Screams Wealth Whispers. I will catch the playback. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Jersey girl. Um, tip lyric 915 send five says silent tea sipper for about five years, but I have watched all your videos. Love you for all you do from ATL and a truck driver. Birthday is Friday. Thank you so much for the long support. I appreciate you and happy early birthday. It's Virgo season. Virgo's in the house. So thank you for coming through love. Um, Alexis Gomez sent a dollar. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, Danny F sent 499 says, okay, he asked about the alien thing. We just watched it, Danny. So I hope that helped. Um, let's see here. Brian Patterson sent 999 said, just sending a little love, boo. I've been rocking with you since you were doing reviews, standing up with that beautiful Afro puff. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for the long time support. Y'all are awesome. Um, let's see here. Try and read a few more. Uh, Forever Your Leo sent 1999. Uh, says Mona Scott and VH1 knows that they were wrong because exploiting us is about lining their pockets. Also, Erica's apologies performative. This isn't her first time. 
or her second time around. She's been calling people monkeys for years. Exactly. I think all of it is performative. Her her apology and the way VH1 handled it, they're all performing at this point. You know, like I said, they've all said real crazy things on that show. And they're just trying to act like they're changing the new leaf. Mark my words, she'll be back on TV in six months. Once this is blown over, she'll slowly creep back and people will forget about it and support her again. So it's all performative. But thank you for the super chat, love. Um, P. Diddy type of party, Sin5 says, do you think Tyrese and Envy's wife had a possible affair? Um, I don't know. I could see them having a threesome, allegedly. I just... It seemed like a weird ass lover's triangle to me. That whole back and forth, it was just weird. I don't understand why the wife is even talking to Tyrese on her own time or vice versa. I wouldn't be surprised if they were wife swapping child. You know, they do all types of weird shit in Holly Weird. Um, let's see here. Desiree said T he adopted the teenage daughter of the girl you haven't seen and dated her. The mom was pregnant and left with the baby. That daughter of the, oh, I didn't know he had adopted the daughter. Is that the daughter that they were saying that she ran away from the mom and Sonetta was calling him baby Dr. York? I didn't know that that was the pregnant, was that the third, the second wife, whatever? The, the wife I was talking about earlier with the Afro, I didn't know that was her daughter who ran away to be with Polite. And she was like 15 or 16 at the time. I remember that was a scandal about three years ago. Wow. So the mother left pregnant with the baby, but didn't take her teen daughter. Okay. That entire, at this point, they're just a cult. They're a cult. That's insane. But thank you for the for the update. I didn't know that that was her daughter. I did hear about the team, but I didn't know it was the pregnant wife's daughter. So thank you for that. Um, Lala G says, even polygamy in the Bible was man-made. God never instructed a man to have multiple wives. The Bible isn't instructions. It's history, too. Mm, they're not ready for that conversation. And even like, you know, even if you're going to take religious texts or Islam, they also said that the man has to be able to afford to take care of multiple wives. A lot of these dusties can't even take care of themselves, let alone they want to start polygamy cults. Most of them who are making money for their polygamous lifestyle are making money from views on YouTube. Let's keep that real, or views on TikTok. So, you know, a lot of them can't even take care of themselves. And you want three and four wives? Absolutely not. Anyone talking that mush mouth, dusty polygamy bullshit, out the window they go. I'm not trying to hear it. Just say you want to fuck a lot of different people. I, I would respect a guy who would say that. Like, look, you know, you can be my main, but I'm going to have side chicks. I can respect that than playing these mental gymnastics of polygamy and polygamy and, you know, all this and that. And then saying that, okay, you can be out here smashing, you know what I'm saying, Becky and Keisha and, you know, Lauren. But then I'm supposed to just sit and wait for your dusty dick after you get done fucking one, two, three, four, five, six women to come and bring me some peen? Absolutely the fuck not. While you're fucking Lauren and Becky and, you know what I'm saying, uh, Rhodesia, I'm going to be out here, you know what I'm saying, with my little side king. We're not going to do that. You're not going to be fucking around on me and I'm sitting here waiting for peen? Dusty peen? Absolutely not. Anybody in a, polygamous, uh, in a polygamy situation, polygamy situation, you have low self-esteem. Because there's no way in hell I'm going to let a dude play me in my face. You know what I'm saying? He can come in and out how he wants to, and then you're supposed to just be sitting around waiting on him. You're just as dusty as he is. I think that's disgusting. That's a passing of soul ties and STDs. You can keep that. I just met up the day. I was like, Rhodesia, child, just trying to think of another day, hoodie. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, when you talk about multiple husbands, oh, they get upset. We talked about one time on the gram. 
I said, I said, well, why can't she have multiple husbands? Oh, all the dusties came out with capes as to why a woman is not allowed to have multiple husbands. It doesn't work that way. You can only have one baby at a time, but a man can impregnate four women at a time. He can have four kids at one time. You can only have one baby. All this mental gymnastics that they were trying to tell me. And I was like, sir, just say you just want to fuck different cooch. Just say that you don't want to be faithful. I can at least respect that. Stop with the mental gymnastics. I'm not going for it at all. Uh, let's see here. Tata delicious, delicious at nine ninety nine says, "Preach tea." They're not ready for these conversations. When you try to hold other women accountable, they call you a hater, judgmental, pick me, a mammy, etc. Exactly. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. I appreciate it. Uh, Tari sent $20 says from London, longtime fan has seen you grow and expand and I'm loving it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, sis, all the way from the UK. Thanks for staying up late. Cause I know it's getting late out here. Uh, yo mama's papas, my West coast Cali people. Thank you so much for the hundred dollars super chat. They said, sending all my love from Cali. My fiance and I are still waiting for you to come out here and give us an event where we can meet you. Have a beautiful day, T. Thank you so much. And thank you and your fiance for always supporting my channel and coming through and showing love. So I appreciate y'all. That was my, my crazy Cali tea sippers right there. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Kima sent $4.99. She says, if he touched on that little girl, he most definitely has touched on his daughters and other children. I'm not going to put that out there. Um, I'm not even going to go there. But... He has issues. I'm just going to talk about where we have proof, which is the girl that he's now in prison for. I don't even want to think about anything with his own children because that'd be disturbing. I'm not going to I'm not going to push falsehoods. So, yeah, it's sad. Um, let's see here. Uh, Urban Angel sent one hundred and fifty and I think Norwegian money she says, hey, T, been watching you since your love and hip hop recaps. Dusty Feet Pete. And Tira, the undercover hood rats. Love you, TPS. This is Taiwanese money. Oh, okay. I thought it was like the Netherlands. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. So, y'all, I've been out here for three hours. It's time for me to go. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. I don't know what that was about, but I'm glad we're able to get it fixed. And I was able to finish my stream about Brother Polite. Um, so, thank you, guys. Uh, Lord Flawless in 499 says, I don't think Wild Goose Mena is racist. I think everyone else is racist because society sees black people as monkeys. I thought the comment was funny. Okay. Well, interesting. You know, like I said, all the people on that show have issues. I don't think anybody's hands are clean. They've all done shady stuff on that show. So I'm going to leave it at that. We had over close to 10,000 people come through the stream please hit the like button we got four thousand likes the, the likes aren't math in please hit the like button and thank you guys so much i will catch you guys later on this week more videos come in thank y'all for the support i hope you guys enjoyed the stream hope you guys got some laugh some education you know what i'm saying i'm glad we got a chance to finally talk about brother polite because people have been asking me but i wanted to wait to see how it played out so now that we have a resolution those were my thoughts so on that note, you guys, have a good night, and thank you guys. Love y'all. Talk to y'all later. Bye.